Did it throw you off? It threw me off. It didn't really throw me off. I woke up. I was refreshed. I felt good. And then we lost an hour. Okay. Lost an hour. And I was like, it's dark outside. It's 7 mm -hmm. o'clock. What's going on? And it dawned on me. It's like, oh, we had a time changer. So anyway, what's up to you guys on Facebook? Um, we are also on uh, several podcasts. Uh, Podbeam, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anything else I'm missing. We're on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. Um, you, you guys will see this obviously after Donovan produces it and everything. And so um, shout out to everybody who's here. Twitter, Donovan also will be um, live, live tweeting mm -hmm. as what they say. Also, we have Mr. Marcus Guyton on here. He's also doing some behind the scene things. So a big, huge shout out to Donovan and Marcus for making this happen. Also to uh, uh, those on Facebook who help us along with this conversation so it's not just us up here, you know, uh, going back and forth like we do on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That's our Tuesday show. We kind of um, get at each other's throats and all of that. And so anyway, hopefully you guys can see the topic, what we will be discussing today. There's a whole lot of things that has transpired over the last week, so I want to touch upon it uh, for this time that we're here. But And I would like to say the uh, comments and directions no, all to no. each other. No, see, Donovan scared this is we. <laughs> we we this is the uh, this is the Demetri K show Donovan scared because we're gonna be talking about Oprah and Gail and he was like you know what I don't want to be involved because I, they might put me on and so I don't want to be like seen saying nothing bad but Donovan Sadiq <laughs> me and him and y'all we having this discussion Donovan's looking Got scared it. he's gonna bit off all his nails because we're gonna be talking about Oberlin and Gale and stuff but it's okay hey hey I'm just saying you know. you'll be alright breathe God. breathe breathe there you go alright here we go Propose yourself so anyway I just wanted to give you guys a, a little bit more time to get on here so I'll go ahead and get started because I think um, we got enough to get the party started so let me go ahead and conjure up my notes alright so as you guys can see and I should also just say this too, the uh, purpose of the Demetra K show is to uh, promote black love, knowledge, and unity, understanding of all the things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people, right? Amen. Okay, and so uh, the topic of the show is breaking the buck. Now, every time I've said that to somebody, I say, what's your show going to be about? Because people ask me, mm -hmm. it says breaking the buck, and the look on their face is like, what does that mean? Exactly. It's like, what is breaking the buck? And so I thought, okay, well, maybe let me let me go and try to do some research so I can have something to go on other than my own understanding. And hello to everybody. I swear I will get to all of you guys' comments. Okay, so let me get started here. And I turn my phone down so y'all don't hear all of that. All right. So breaking the buck. Are Oprah and Gail a tool of white supremacy? Okay, let's find out. All right. So over the last couple of years, we have been hearing a lot about the term breaking the buck. Now, we know that breaking the buck or buck breaking hasn't um, is not new. It's been around since slavery. But I would say for me in the last couple of years, I guess since um, this consciousness thing came back around, we've been hearing this term a lot. And so, um, all right, so here we go. We have been hearing a lot about it lately, especially in regards to black men in the public eye, right? Now, the men in the public eye are considered to be powerful and strong in one way, shape, or form. So what exactly is buck breaking? It is the psychological and physical emasculation of the black man. For a lack of better words, breaking the buck is the removal of one's manhood. Slave plantation owners only wanted the slaves strong enough to work, but did not want them strong enough to rebel. 
Hey, you guys. So I'm going to get every one of you guys' comments, okay? And so um, as previously stated, a bump was thought of as a big and strong um, black man physically and mentally, right? All right. And so in his natural state, there is no way that he will allow another man to harm him or his family. It just wasn't going to happen, right? Now, in fact, he would kill anyone who attempted to do so. So the slave owner had to find a way to break him all the way down to a creature that would be as harmless as a fly. So the master found a few ways to do that. And I thought of some um, that came to my recollection. So breaking the buck was done on the slave plantation during slavery, right? So one of the ways that slave masters broke um, the buck was by raping the slave women in front of their men, knowing that the men would not fight back, even though he wanted to fight back, but they knew he wouldn't fight back because he was afraid of being badly beaten, maimed, or even killed, or even some of his family members killed. So he just kind of took it for a lack of better words. Another way of breaking the buck was also raping his daughters and even sons without the fear of retaliation. Like, what are you going to do? You know, I'm going to snatch your daughter up in the middle of the night and do whatever I want or whatever I want to her. And you ain't going to do nothing. OK. All right. And so the slave men themselves would also be raped in front of all the slaves on the plantation to create fear in other slaves and to emasculate the black man. Now, also during my research, I saw a lot of people trying to say it wasn't true. It's like, well, I mean, I know it's kind of hard. A lot of this was coming from white sources that were saying it wasn't true. But it's like, what white slave master, anybody's going to document, yeah, <laughs> we raped men. We, we, yeah, we, 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 we um, had, you know, were homosexuals and we raped these black men on the planet. Well, who's going to document that, right? And so I just thought that was stupid. <laughs> okay. And so let's see, castrating the uh, male slaves was another way to dehumanize and emasculate him. You guys know what castration means? to remove um, some or all of his genitals. Um, and, and in a lot of cases, they made them, uh, what do you call them, munichs? Eunuchs. Yeah, yeah, yeah eunuch. What did mm -hmm. I say? Munichs? That's yeah. a, some, eunuch. somewhere. That's a some, yeah. uh, eunuch, um, to where they didn't have um, male genitalia at all. Um, really because they wanted to emasculate them, take away their manhood, and um, also in fear that they would, you know, perhaps do something to the white women running around. So the whole host of reasons why they did that. And they also did that to black men during the lynching process. That was common. Right. All right. The males will often be beaten um, until near uh, death to kill the natural fight within him so that he would not cause problems to the slave owners. Among other things, another way to break the buck was to put the slave women over him, disrupting the natural order of things. For example, the man is considered to be the head of the household, right? I mean, he used to be. Now, during slavery, that was not the case. And in many cases, she, the, the, the woman, um, they weren't married because they couldn't be married, but his woman, nevertheless, she um, was taught to subjugate him and take him down. Boy, shut up. You ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. Sit down. I got this. You you know, all that. Oh, sounds stuff. like uh, the modern black woman. I'm just saying. That. I thought you didn't want to be involved in this. <laughs> okay? So, uh, let's see. All right, so fa to fast forward to modern day times, the uh, breaking of the buck is still in effect, to your point. Mm -hmm. It's still in effect, right? Now, let's look at some past and recent examples. In the 1960s, many of our male leadership were murdered in order to stop the rise of a black messiah. That messiah had the potential to lead black people away from the oppressor and to finally being uh, uh, free people. Mm -hmm. Right? So what's the messiah? That's this deity, this people, person, uh, this figure that everybody Martin looked up to. Right? Martin Luther King and Malcolm X is the people who um, were, had the ability to sway black people into uh, being upwardly mobile, mm -hmm. right? All right, so we know those people were killed off. Um, killing the leaders was, in a way, mass buck breaking because if I kill this leader and I kill that leader and that leader and that leader, guess what happens? After a while, people stop wanting to be a leader. Mm -hmm. They start saying, you know what? Um, I like life just a little bit more mm -hmm. than, you know, trying to lead black people to freedom, so um, I'm going to pass. All right, so... Let's see. Do, 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 do. So many of our black men are continuously um, harassed by the police and incarcerated with the attempt of breaking them. We see that all the time. There's plenty of examples of that. Some recent examples of bug breaking or attempted bug breaking in the public eye are as follows. Uh, Colin Kaepernick being blackballed or whiteballed, as some people would say. 
due to protesting, and they scared the other football players, did they not? They did. A lot of other football players probably was like, well, you know what? We agree with Kaepernick, but we just are scared because we don't want to lose our, our job, money. miss what our money. So that was a way of doing it through Colin Kaepernick. Kevin Hart, remember what happened to him a couple months back when he was supposed to do the Oscars? They dug back in the crates 10 mm -hmm. plus years ago and found some uh, what they call homophobic tweets when he was making jokes. Um, he apologized. First, he wasn't going to do it. Then they made him do it. And then he did it again. And he ended up still not doing the Oscars. Sound like a lot of that was his choice, but mm -hmm. it still was a lot of drama. So they broke him for lack of better words. Hey, I'm sorry. All right. Then you have someone like President Obama when he was forced to publicly denounce Minister Farrakhan and B Jeremiah Wright. Remember that? Um, when he was running the first mm -hmm. time, Jeremiah Wright, who was his pastor for, what, 20 years, and he, you know, they took some of his uh, words out of context and made it seem like he was um, this big time racist and all this other stuff. And so that's when Obama had his big um, historical, uh, what do you call it, speech on race. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's supposed to be like this. It's going to go down in history as one of the greatest speeches ever made because he denounced these guys that he was friends with for many years, okay? Breaking the buck, all right? And so then, Terry Crews. You guys remember Terry Crews? Now, Terry Crews is the actor. You guys most famously know him as Damon on Friday at the Next and... Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine or something. And he was the father in uh, uh, Chris Rock. Chris, which is odd because you you really don't even think about him being you know the father on an all black show like mm -hmm. that. All right, so anyway, Terry Crews, the biggest buck of them all, you know, not trying to be mean. Um, when his genitalia was grabbed at a party by a white man in front of his wife and everyone else in the room, he gained national attention and had his manhood questioned by everyone, which he did. Even Diane Feinstein asked him why a man as big as him did not fight back um, as he was testifying in front of Congress about sexual assault. In so many words, he stated that a black man in America does not have a lot of chances to make it. Therefore, he did not fight back. That is emasculation. Right. So, uh, so uh, real quick, so mm -hmm. uh, Steve Harvey is correct in saying, we in the money game. We in the money game out here. Well, I mean, I saw when Terry Crews testified during mm -hmm. in Congress and he was he was choked up and he was like, I don't have, as a black man, I don't have a lot of chances yeah, to make it here. Opportunities. So, and I'm paraphrasing, but what he was pretty much saying is grabbing my balls in front of my wife, what was I going to do? Mm -hmm. That's like in slavery. You know, somebody come up to you, do something, a uh, slave master do something to you, what are you going to do? fight back and then you end up dying and even in modern days so you fight back make a big stink and so you're not working ever that's right I mean I'm just saying that's pretty much what Muhammad said. Ali did it right and so of course there's the everyday man that is being broken at his job and I just use that as an example everyday by the white man just to put food on the table how many times do we know of people who are you know taking stuff just to put food on the table like I want to just choke him or but I can't you know so all right where did I go? Uh, so can you guys think of other black men that have been broken by white supremacy? So while you're doing that, let me close by saying this. During the last week, we saw two very prominent men being broken in front of the whole world. One dead and one who was alive. Okay? Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. And guess who was doing the job of white supremacy? Uh, you, you sure you want some of this? Yeah. yeah I, you know what? I want some. Okay. Black women. Okay, specifically, I was saying um, two very prominent black women, Oprah Winfrey and Gail King. They're best friends. You guys know who I don't need to uh, tell you who they are. So Oprah put extra nails in Michael's coffin by interviewing two men who accused him of sexually abusing them as children. Their claims were thrown out twice in court, and now Oprah has given them a chance to try him in the court of public opinion with zero facts. Why? Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. Gail interviewed R. Kelly, and she was applauded by many for keeping calm as R. Kelly had a meltdown in front of the whole world. He had finally been broken, and she was given the credit for finishing him off. So why did I bring up Oprah and Gail? An article that I read on Albany.edu made a good point by stating that black men are socially castrated by black women all of the time. That is done because black women, whether we know it or not, judge black men's manhood by the standards of white patriarchy. If he does not live up to that, she often dehumanizes him. And a lot of times I just don't think we are cognizant that we do that to him. Now, the cold part about what Oprah and Gail did is that the very white men that they hang around have 
also been proven to be sexual predators, like proven, right? Or at least allegations, okay? Mm -hmm. Be sexual predators. In Oprah's case, she along with Naomi Campbell have um, even been accused of helping to set up one of Harvey Weinstein's victims. There's a black lady who said that in Oprah introduced him. She had a script, went to his hotel room with him, and he forced sexual acts on her. And she blamed Oprah and Naomi for, you know, setting them up. Mm -hmm. Which they said that a lot about Oprah, that she was kind of the go-to between him and a few women. The dirty, no good, sniggering her ass. That said, Oprah and Gail are tools of white supremacy to help break the buck to continue to destroy black men. Lastly, the black men that they do, the black men that they do hang out with are the likes of Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry, men who have been emasculated a long time ago and who makes movies and television shows that show black men in a very bad light. Now I know I said a lot, now it's your turn. Are we witnessing modern day bug breaking and, and are some black women helping to do the bidding of white supremacy? All right, so um, I'm going to get to some of these comments and I know you have a lot to say. I think you've come out of your shell a little bit. You're not scared of Oprah and Gail here. Wait, the doors are locked, right? Yes. Okay, good. I'm, 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 yeah. So Bring Sydney it. says, what's up, family? What is up, um, Mr. Sydney? Hey, uh, Babu. He says, um, uh, Mayat, Hotep. Uh, and some else I can't pronounce, but back at you. And Cindy <laughs> says, uh, what's up, Donovan? Throw rocks and hide in your hands. Yes, yes. that's right. We changed his name to uh, his heart don't pump no Kool-Aid. Kool that's right. But today that's is probably right. a little Kool-Aid because we're talking about Oprah and Gail, so we kind of, <laughs> he might be throwing rocks today. And um, Eris, uh, okay, so he's, uh, or she is putting the topic up so you guys can right see on. what's going on. I don't see any more comments. And let me actually go on here. And make sure that I'm not missing any, because I know last time we had a little bit of a snafu. So, Donovan, what you got for me? Well, what I got for you is, uh, the, good, the good news is people are commenting on the video. We put up a lot of videos in the last couple of days. Okay. And uh, the views have been great, and people have been, you know, talking about us badly. Saying that we don't know what we're talking about. We're new booty to politics and all this other stuff, which is good. So, everybody keep the comments coming, because the whole point, what you guys don't understand is... Two, three years ago, we weren't talking at all. Right. Now we're having a conversation, and that's the importance of these shows is to, is to bring people to conversate and to uh, progressively think. Absolutely. So do you think, I don't see any more comments here, mm -hmm. so I'll continue to talk. Do you think that Oprah and Gail are a tool of white supremacy? So I'll be, let, me, let me preface that a little mm -hmm. bit more. So when I say a tool of white supremacy, because I've said that to quite a few people, and they, they, they had this like bewildered look on their face, like what does that mean mm -hmm. exactly? And so I guess what I'm trying to say is, or I'm asking, do you guys think that Oprah and Gail are helping yes. to, uh, yeah. especially like in Michael's case with Oprah, I mean, that to me, it was just like, like, okay, admittedly, I'm a Michael Jackson fan, all right? I'm a Michael Jackson fan, but I'm like, Oprah, you're supposed to be this big time journalist and all this other stuff. You've been around, you know, you're esteemed and all this stuff, and you do this interview with no facts, and I'm like, Oprah, you have the gall. Mm-hmm. The goal to sit up here and judge Michael Jackson when you yourself, you know, have issues. Like you are booed up with Harvey Weinstein on plenty of yeah. occasions. Well, well, the thing is, uh, in history, whenever somebody does that, then their stuff gets exposed. I mean, it's, a, it's just a matter of time. What I don't like about what Oprah's did is this man opened his home to you, his life to you. They embraced you. They let you see other things that other people did not would want to see. And then the man is dead and you're going to go behind and just help destroy it, of course she's a, a tool of white supremacy. But then there's a bigger question, why? What's in it for Oprah? Oprah has all the money in the world. What's in it for Oprah to continue to nail the, 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 the nails in Michael Jackson's coffin? You know, to the point of, now, from what I understand, the documentary didn't go over as well as they thought it was going to mm -hmm. go over. It kind mm -hmm. of like, eh. Because most people who I know saw it, I didn't see it, will not watch it. But most people who I know saw it said it was terrible. terrible. That it was, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. There's a whole host of facts out there about um, Wade Robeson or Robson, however you say his name. A lot of backfire. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like the dude is a proven liar. But yet, you know, you're hearing, I read an article somewhere that the Lakers... Um, have stopped using Michael Jackson's song now. I mean, not that mm -hmm. I'm still listen to him, but so it started. He started his estate is starting to get some blowback from this hit piece, you know. So let me get these comments here. So I, um, Abdullah, what's happening? It says powerful black women always played a part to help the Caucasian elites 
to rule against us. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. He, you know, he must be listening to Tommy Sotomayor. Do you listen to Tommy Sotomayor? <laughs> if you do, I'm going to delete you. I'm just playing. <laughs> and Al says, um, I have a friend who works for Xfinity, and she said the company got a memo that, okay... Okay, I had to read. I got to read pre-read mm. Al's comments. It says, "I have a friend who works for Xfinity, and she said the company got a memo that Surviving R. Kelly documentary is the most watched on demand program in the last five years." Really? But to me, I like I didn't see the documentary either. But surviving R. Kelly. Surviving R. Kelly. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that what yeah. it said? Yes. Yeah, surviving R. Kelly. I didn't see it, but why? Why? Like, to me, it sounds like it's a lot of salacious details, and it also sounds like I'm not. Because listen, I'm not defending R. Kelly. I believe R. Kelly is guilty of some things okay but it sounds like that too is starting to unfold a little bit in regards to some of the moms sounds like the one of the moms said that she's never met r kelly and then there's a picture of them two hugged up with the girls so now, it's like either you met them or you didn't right now you know? now in, in regards to r kelly this is all see people are forgetting the one thing that is very uh poignant in the r kelly case especially when it came to his child mm -hmm. support him being locked up for child support we have a problem in the child support system uh, when you're locking the father up, that isn't helping the father, that isn't helping the mother, that isn't helping the children. Write that down, because yeah. we we got time today. Yeah. You want to have this? Diamond's been wanting to have the child support argument for a minute, so don't let me. I mean, forget. you know, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, locking him up. Who who does that right. help? Right. Well, we gonna get into okay. it, brother. I'm, I'm right that down. Yeah, don't you let me forget. All right. All right. Hey, William says yes. They are ages. I mean, what other conclusion can you draw other than them being ages? Because it's like again. Oprah and Gail have so much money, clout, just whatever. No, no, Oprah does. Well, Gail I mean, hangs but on. now, but listen, now Gail, um, I guess her contract is up at CBS this morning, which is where she works and where she did the interview with R. Kelly. And now all these other um, big time news stations are fighting over her. Oh, Lord, please. please. They're fighting over her now. And it's like, I don't know if the R. Kelly thing was. Um, Put the initial the thing, mm -hmm. but I, no, I think it probably did put her over the top, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, I, I don't want to use the word she took down as black man with R. Kelly because it's going to come off wrong because R. Kelly, you know, took himself down, down per se, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, it's just like, I didn't watch it, but from the steals and the stuff I seen people put up, this man is just completely destroyed yeah. I, you know, at least like broken down mm -hmm. in front of the whole world and she's getting all these accolades for... For, you know, being the one that, to, to make it happen. And so, Babu, you says, I really can't stand that Gail and Oprah are butt-breaking uh, as much as they are exploiting and exposing two dysfunctional examples of mentally ill individuals, mm -hmm. which white supremacists raise, uh, let's see, uh, uh, white supremacists raise to prominence to be examples of successful people, and then they use them to destroy the black image. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And I think that's really what I was trying to go with that is like, you know, R. Kelly obviously is, has some issues, issues. and Michael That's Jackson cool. wasn't perfect either. Was Michael Jackson a pedophile? I don't think he was. But to your point, you have these two prominent black women now exploiting the legacy of one because he's dead, and then one who was obviously... I mean, if R. Kelly's going down, he's going down. I don't think uh, Gail needed to be... Um, uh, the one to do it. Right. So I don't, and but, this, in but, all fairness, I don't know who approached who. I don't know if they well, approached no, her. Well, or, you, no, you, you got you to look at it this way. If a white person interviewed R. Kelly, it would be perceived as, uh-oh, look at the white man bringing the black man down. It, it, it's just, it, it's it's the same game, okay? It's just, okay, like like Nancy Pelosi. She says she's looking into reparations. I'm going to give you that example. Mm -hmm. James Clyburn, 78 years old. He's number three in the Democratic hierarchy. Old Uncle Remus, James Clyburn. They made him go out there to say it ain't going to happen for black people. Because if a white person went out there, yeah, you know what I mean? So, it makes sense. You know, so, so with Gail going out there, the only person that could interview him would be somebody of color. Right. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense, but it's just, I, I, to me, it just looks bad. All right. And Al said, Oprah never addressed the people. Um, her, the people. Tyler! Tyler! Oh, that's his cat. He was about to, uh, Tyler was about to uh, tear some stuff up around here. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> he says, um, Oprah never addressed the people who F and molested her in her past. Well, she does. She does address it, but uh, she doesn't say who they are. She doesn't say who they are. She says an uncle, but she doesn't say his name. Did, did Tyler do something? He no. was, oh. <laughs> <To the back. laughs> Gave me a heart attack. 
All right, and so our dude says, no, I don't listen to Tommy Sotomayor, whatever his name is, mm -hmm. but his voice is irritating. Laugh out loud. Yeah, the Tommy is, he's not one of my favorite people either. Right. And then Babu says, why are we even claiming these dysfunctional race traitors as one of us? Well, they, they're, they're black, you know. Well, so he, I don't well know. we can't deny it. Yeah, know? he can't deny it. I mean, I, I don't think it's really an issue of us claiming them. I mean, clearly... Oprah and Gail uh, are not for the black agenda. Like I, I've never thought that Oprah was. Especially, for me, the proof that Oprah wasn't really for black people is when she created OWN. When she, well, not when she first created OWN, she had a lot of white content on there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't very successful. Remember, she was doing bad. She was about to tank and all of that. And then she started to turn it over to the ratchetness, the ghettoness, the, the gritty black you know, stories, and he had Ayala on there helping with the nonsense. Right, which is a playbook in network TV. Think, yes. of, think of the CW, UPN, uh, the WB, those channels. They did not take off until you had the Jamie Foxx show, all these black shows. Right. To get their thing yeah, I mean, like, Ayala, she used to be one of those people who was, I, I mean, I'm not saying, yeah, she was serious, but now she's got the most dysfunctional people on the, under the earth. On there, I mean, every bad scenario black people could be in, she, she's doing it. And we, the, you know what, though? I can't really blame Oprah. I blame us because we eat that up. Oh. You know, Tyler Perry's garbage on it. We watch it. It's just... <sighs> so that's how I kind of knew that Oprah wasn't on the team. She's like, black people, please. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh... Well, you know, it's funny that, that most people who, they get a few coins... Steve Harvey's one of them. Right. They, they, they just think they're on another level. Eventually, and, and, though, and, and they're not with us. They'll have to come back home exactly. eventually. And Dunamis, what's happening? He says, yes, they are. They haven't came after none of the white people who do the same thing. Oprah is repaying a favor between her father and her school and allegations. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, Let's see. Yeah, a favor. Okay. Um, They made those uh, situations quiet for her. She's doing this. For them, yes. So remember her school in Africa when they mm -hmm. had a, um, a whole bunch of sexual allegations. We, we need to go investigate that when we get there. We're going to investigate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, they had to, to your point. They did have a whole bunch of allegations of sexual abuse at her very own school, and she went over there and did what she did, and it did kind of go away. So it's like, where is that special? Yeah. That's you all, know, all she did was throw some surviving around. Oprah's school for girls. You know, mm -hmm. where is that special? Mm -hmm. And so, hey, Tammy says, I think they are doing what they are told to do. I read that Oprah did the interview to keep her contract because she was losing contracts with various companies. So she did the interview to pacify white supremacy. You know what? I wouldn't even doubt it because to me, it's like she doesn't really need the money. So what? And then they said, too, I, I heard uh, Michael Jackson's nephew, which Taj Jackson has been all over it. Mm -hmm. He says that I guess Oprah and David Geffen are best friends. Yeah. And David Geffen and Michael Jackson fell out. And so sh they think that she's doing it um, See, at, at behest of him, that well, he's kind of spearheading it. Well, here's the funny thing. Everybody's heard of DreamWorks, Steven Spielberg, David Geffen, and that other guy. Um, initially, Michael Jackson was supposed to be a part of that. Of what? DreamWorks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be a part of that. Then he had and something on Dream... Um, the, the Moonwalker was on DreamWorks, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah. The, the Moonwalker thing, whatever deal. And uh -huh. him and Jeff and him fell out, and they, they kind of kept Michael out of that. Right. Oprah's trying to be a part of a partner of that. Got you know, it. Hmm. I mean, you know, that's... You know, to me, that would be plausible that she's trying to, you know, appease... White folks. supremacy. Right. I'm trying to get on the team. Right. You know. Got it. And Babu, he says, I applaud Gail and Oprah for helping to destroy the enemies of black people. Well... Is that Michael it, 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 is Michael Jackson an enemy? You know, yeah. so he destroyed them today, and then who next? Where does it stop? Mm -hmm. And I was just having this conversation with my daughter. I, you know, this is just my theory. I could be wrong. So they got the real big fish, mm -hmm. Bill Cosby. Then I think R. Kelly was kind of the litmus test. Negroes fell over like little you know, flies on, you know. Um, they killed and, Prince. He got all his that. But now they're going after Michael Jackson dead. dead. Right. And we just, we amen and stuff. So, yeah, okay. So we're applauding Gail and Oprah for going after R. Kelly and Michael Jackson. Who next? Who's to say that it won't be you in some way, right. shape, or form? And, and then we just got done talking about uh, Oprah's school. There was abuse going on in the school. Yeah. Wouldn't that clarify her as an enemy? Right, yeah, right. Here. I mean, what enemy is she, she in the motherland? Mm -hmm. And they're abusing the girls who already mm -hmm. have been through some things. So, yeah, wouldn't that make Oprah an enemy as well? Mm -hmm. So, we applauding Oprah and Gail for destroying other black people, but we're not applauding them or asking them to go destroy white people mm -hmm. who do it. I mean, so it's like we can't. 
I, that comment is kind of weird to yeah. me. So I'm not really... It's you know, a double edged. Yeah, this is weird. And Al, let me read your comment. No. <laughs> and Donnell, what's happening? He says, Peace uh, Queen, mm -hmm. uh, Donovan and Fam, what's hey. happening? And Marcus says, I think the most powerful points that need to be made with all of these individuals, whether they might be right or wrong, the white people that benefited from these black men the most. Um, let's see, green lighted these attacks after these black men were able to benefit themselves only. Michael Jackson owns his music and profits a large margin from the Sony mm -hmm. uh, music catalog. Bill Cosby owns the Cosby show and profits as an owner now. Um, R. Kelly fought to do the same thing for his publishing rights and boom, he's under the gun now. Well, I think um, those things definitely have something to do with it, but Taj Jackson, which is his nephew, says that Michael Jackson no longer owns Sony for whatever reason, the way uh, the Sony uh, stuff the, for whatever reason, the way it, um, it was written when he died, it went back to them. Yeah, well, uh, nobody owns the stuff outright completely. Well, he says Sony owns it now. Yeah, Sony yeah. owns it because, like, because you know, it wasn't his intellectual well, no, property. It, 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 no, it no, wasn't no. his intellectual property. No, no, but about, owned it. Uh, yeah, but I'm talking about yeah. the Beatles catalog. When somebody dies like that, it reverts back to the... Something like yeah. that. So it, they, they have it now. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and there's another thing about uh, R. Kelly being broke, and we'll talk about that another time. Okay. Well, he's you can technically, bring it up. Yeah, he's technically not broke, and there's a reason why that goes back to the publishing. Okay, well, bring it up, brother. Mm -hmm. All right, and so um, Al says... <sighs> Michael mm. Jackson wasn't a pedophile, but he was an ex-file. When I hear his music, I think Scully. Yeah, actually, it's mm. funny because I heard Paul Mooney say that same thing today. Yeah. He wasn't Michael Jackson wasn't a pedophile. He was ex-file. So basically, mm. he was, to that point, he was saying that Michael Jackson was a little bit eccentric. Some mm. people say weird, whatever word you want to use, but he definitely wasn't a pedophile. And Tammy says, although I don't like to see black men being faced or highlight of negative behavior in the media, but R. Kelly brought this on himself. He, he sure did. did. I believe he is a monster, so I'll prosecute him. But let's not jump the gun. Uh, let's see. Let's not give white supremacy the hand in doing so because they don't um, with their own. They hide their sins, but broadcast ours slash blacks. Absolutely. And that's the point that I originally made a long time ago. Anybody who was truly interested in making sure R. Kelly paid um, his debt to society could have done that years ago. This stuff was never a secret. That it was, oh, yeah, Jim DeRogada said this stuff was not hidden. Mm -hmm. It was in plain view. Right. But Negroes on NyQuil, mm -hmm. you know, they had to wait for a lifetime to come out. And, that, and I love your point, Tammy, because it's like, I think we as black people get in the habit of letting white supremacy tell us who to be mad at. Exactly. But to your point, but we ain't going to say nothing about our own. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we hear a lot about deadbeat black baby daddies. Well, let's talk about the original deadbeat baby daddy. That's the white man, the well, slave plantation. I mean, we don't want, we need to talk about all of it if well, we don't just talk about well, us. Well, let's talk about real time. Donald Trump is doing crimes in real time in front of everybody and nobody's taking action. Yeah, because we so busy focus on R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. and, and R. Kelly gets, and he deserves what he has coming to him. I'm not no ever doubt. saying that he's not no guilty. Doubt. I mean, True indeed, R. Kelly's been found not guilty. So he's not technically mm -hmm. guilty of anything. Now, has he done some things? We're quite sure he has. And time will, time so will time tell. tell and he needs to pay for that. But I'm not going to let white people just dictate to me who I should be mad at, especially when they're not holding their own accountable. Exactly. And Jonelle says, we need to learn as a people to stop being on the side of whites when it comes to our own people. We are the only people cheerleading when our enemies are hanging our people. This only shows why, oops, uh, this only shows why we must have our own to regulate our own affairs. Oprah need to talk to Charlie Sheen. He gave young women AIDS. Not only did he give mm. young women AIDS, but now he's at the top of his game. He's on GQ magazine with another woman. So we going I mean, you're giving people AIDS, and we're going to gloss over that? Which is a crime to give somebody yeah, unknowingly. But, but yet, we are so... Uh, isn't his behavior... It, it, isn't... Uh, so it isn't about whether they're innocent or guilty. It's about the loyalty of Oprah and Gail. I mean, it's listen, technically R. Kelly has not been found guilty. As I said, is he guilty of some things? He probably is. Michael Jackson was never found guilty. So why is somebody like Oprah, and Oprah's supposed to be a seasoned journalist veteran, and she's going off of zero facts and facts, 
the uh, the facts are in favor of Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and so she's going willy nilly to have this interview with two dudes have been ex exposed as liars, like it's a timeline of lies that Way Robson has told. But yet, Oprah. So my question is, why is she doing this? Is there a reason? Are you, as some people have alluded, is she doing this for a favor? I mean, is there something? Is there some other motive as to why she's gonna murder Michael Jackson twice? What's in it for Oprah to do that? So yes, it's a it's it's oh, Michael and and R. Kelly technically are innocent. Right. Uh, they have not been found yeah. guilty, so I don't even think that's the yeah. question. It's to me is a question of why Oprah and Gail are doing that. Anybody who's followed this show for the last two months will know that I have repeatedly said, and I didn't need Lifetime to tell me, that R. Kelly is a monster. I've always known he is a monster because I, unlike a lot of people, do their research, and I've read a lot of stuff, and I've talked to people who knew or know R. Kelly who said he's been doing it for years. It's just been getting swept under the rug. So this question is about Oprah and Gayle being a tool of white supremacy because why are they doing it? They don't need the money, so there must be another reason why they're doing it. Yes. And Dunamis says they got the DreamWorks logo from Mike. So yes. Dunamis knows because mm -hmm. he's in, you know, television production and all yeah. that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it so. has that little Neverland boy character. Right. That's, yeah. So that's what I thought because I know it, I saw it and mm -hmm. um, I remember first seeing it on Moonwalker, his Moonwalker thing. Hey, Rich, you said Kevin Spacey openly threatened to bring down a whole uh, uh, pedo ring and his, or uh, pedophile ring, mm -hmm. and his allegations went away at least for the mainstream news cycle. So he said Kevin Spacey. Oh, because I thought Kevin Spacey was a pedophile from what people are saying. And uh, Marcus says he may not um, own Sony, but he still gets major profits. He owns yeah. Michael Jackson music with Sony distributors for him. So if the goal was to, is to destroy him so Sony could own him financially, they're doing, um, doing um, don't work at a failed pace. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but his nephew Taj... Has, like I said, he's been all over the world defending his uncle and saying, I mean, we've seen interviews mm -hmm. where Michael saying they're going to kill me. They're right. trying to kill me for my catalog. They, they, Gregory talked about him going over to Michael Jackson. He was called over there because Michael Jackson hadn't eaten or drank anything in days. He was high, severely dehydrated because he said, I fear somebody's going to poison me. Mm -hmm. And so he had to rush him to a, he had to undercover, take him to a hospital where they say, if you didn't bring him, uh, when you did, he would have died because he was severely dehydrated. It took like a day or so for them to bring him back to life as far as food. So the dude knew that something was going to happen to him. And then uh, Sydney says, I'm back. Well, yeah. And then Jonell says, Oprah and Gail is in bed with um, Harvey Weinstein and various other Jews who are pedophiles and pushing that agenda to legalize that foul and, um, sex with animals. The agenda is to make it to the norm. To the do, 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 to the demise of the black man, why um, haven't they highlighted the children they kidnapped and raped at the border? Some of those children are missing. Well, see, they're not going to do that. I mean, as I said, it's no secret. Oprah's booed up with Harvey Weinstein on various occasions, and Gail too. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I mean, and, and Oprah with Trump. So it's like, okay, Oprah. I get it. You want to expose people. Then what if your journals expose everybody? Like you don't have the moral authority to do what you're doing to Michael Jackson. Just on some of the stuff she's complicit in. You don't have the right to do that morally. And Marcus says, anyone watching that wishes to comment, please tap on the link in the comment and join the conversation. Absolutely. Yes. And Tammy says, R. Kelly is brainwashing these young girls, keeping them from communicating with their families. That's right. Proves that, that he's not right, but then true. That's what they're, I don't want to say true. That's what they're saying. And listen, again, I'm not defending R. Kelly, but I want to argue on the side of logic. How do we know that they're being brainwashed? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it just because we hear the parents saying that? I'm not saying they're not, I, but something's going on. To hear the parents saying it, but then on one hand, you see the parents who say, I've never met him, but then the mom is in a picture with him. So something is going mm -hmm. on, right? I mean, I just, I don't know. We Nobody knows but those people involved. But I agree. I, I, I go on record for the thousandth time. R. Kelly is a monster. And Richard says, uh, Charlie Sheen said, sorry for the whole AIDS mistake. So he's remorseful and learned, and he has learned side eye. Right. Is that all it takes? I just gave you a little AIDS. Mm -hmm. You forgive me? Right. 
We good. Come on, let's dab it up. You, you, we, we good. You know what I mean? I have the money to save my life. <laughs> right. Good luck to you. Right. And Abdullah says, Oprah has a lot of power. She's used the feminist approach. It attracted middle-aged, rich white women, and it seems black women uh, that think like white women. Yeah. We underestimate the power of Oprah um, have in... Oops. Have in... Do, 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 do. I'm trying to see more. It's tripping. Okay. Oprah... Oh, you went in. Okay. <laughs> uh, Oprah having Hollywood and these major corporations, she put her bug in sucking pink, pale somethings mm -hmm. in the industry so uh, she can run for president. Those white boys like having sex with Oprah. Her magic sex is appalling uh, and too appealing to them. Oprah is in the right uh, person, the elite pick to destroy Michael. Oh, God. Well, well, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to look at the appeal certain people have and what their mass appeal is. Oprah is the perfect person because, oh, Oprah, yeah, you know, you women just fell all over that bullshit. So. Yeah, and Oprah has had to backtrack a lot from being wrong, especially, I mean, Ross having a lot of people on the show um, who were liars, for lack of better words. And so, I mean, why should this be any different? I mean, I'm just, I'm like mad, you guys. I'm pissed off that Oprah thought that attacking Michael Jackson's dead body and his legacy was something she should have been well, doing. Well, why not? Because she knows the American people are not going to do their homework, and they just want the soundbite, and they just love her. So, and we like salaciousness. Right. You know, I heard that they gave a lot of really graphic details, mm -hmm. and it's like, I I'm not interested in that. And Sydney says, I just said to a white friend, you claim... Um, Representative Omar is anti-Semitic, uh, but not. because of her comments, but when that sun kissed looking toddler uses racist comments, you tell us how to feel. Hope not having it. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th th that was very hypocritical. You're going to do a, a hate bill, which a lot of the Black Caucus and Hispanic Caucus signed off on. I mean, that's, these guys are just tools. You're going to do a hate bill, and you got a president that, that just does it outright every day. All right. of a sudden... Why shouldn't we uh, criticize Israel? Why are why are our politicians pledging allegiance to another nation? And that's why she nation? should just ask that question. Why are we so concerned with them? You know, like mm -hmm. we got our own fish to fry. And Al, silly, says R. Kelly did so many bad things. Uh, never mind. I will end my comment before it doesn't get read. <laughs> Martha says the uh, the one thing we can be proud of the most is that black people came out in full force for Michael Jackson because there yes. was no proof. So if this is the tool that unites us, then I think. Uh, let's see. I think we need to ride this train as far as we can take it. No, absolutely. You know, that is really refreshing that people were like, okay, God damn it. You're not going to come after Michael. I mean, some people fall for it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can't really do nothing about that. But for the most part, I think a lot of people are like, nah, I'm good. I'm, that's why I'm going to stop letting white well, people tell me well, what to think. Well, I, I think a lot of people uh, did it for the fact that the man can't defend himself. And that's then he was proven innocent. Yeah. For the man, I mean, he had a, if, for those of you guys who don't know, Michael Jackson was under a 10 year FBI uh, investigation, investigation that he did not know about. The FBI tracked this man for 10 whole years and found nothing. But yeah, Oprah's black ass did a special and get up there with these dudes and she gonna try to concoct something that was the FBI. Like, if the FBI wants you, they gonna get you. Cause you know, uh, performed a raid on his ranch twice unannounced. Didn't find anything. The FBI hasn't done any raids on the Trump properties. Well, they're all. not gonna raid the exactly. Trump properties, you know. Exactly. But yet, you find it in your heart to have a, a heart to heart with Wade Robson and James Safe Chuck and this, you know, the, the director of this, Dan Reed. He just he irks me because he looks like that dude, that opportunist white dude who, uh, along with uh, Michael Avenatti. Um, who's going after R. Kelly? He's got all this evidence. It's like, well, where is it at? Right. Nobody's you know, you're just it. right. You're trying to further your career by, you know, jumping on the, these black dudes, whether they're right or wrong. You're trying to. You don't care about black people. You only care about furthering your career. And then let's see. Uh, Marcus says many can or many can say what they want about R. Kelly. R. Kelly. It's right or wrong, but you do not get to once again change the law to get him. That is dangerous for all 
um, and the message uh, says it's clear. Well, I think in regards to um, the laws in R. Kelly, especially when it comes to kids, there's no really uh, any statute yeah, of limitations. Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, he's open game if indeed he's done those things. I mean, I, I just think, too, we don't want to get in the habit of, um, you know, trying to let R. Kelly off the hook. If the man is innocent, then so be it. But... I just think there's a lot saying that he's not innocent. Right. Like remember, in a court of law, the first thing that anybody's going to tell you or sat on a jury is you have to pre-believe uh, that this man is innocent until the evidence shows. We're well, supposed to, yeah. but that's not how it works. And yeah. Al says, "Donovan, take the to the Walgreens after the show to check her blood pressure." <laughs> I'm off the hook. No, you didn't. Oh, I'm not. okay. Didn't and Donnell says, "Knowingly giving women AIDS is murder and truly cold-blooded." And Oprah Gill, our um, complaint. Um, I think said our complaint, I think you may say complicit in Zionist agenda, whom they dine with and rub um, in the dark is only evidence she's never truly been for black people, never for black people, especially poor black people. And I saw the story too where she was kind of, uh, uh, some, it's some hit piece out on her now, see? It's like it's no fun when a rabbit has a gun. Somebody's made a hit piece about her, and they said that a lot of her story about her being poor is concocted. Mm -hmm. She tells a story about her. She had two cockroaches for pets, <laughs> Melinda and some damn body name of the cockroaches, and that's how poor she was. And her cousin was like, yeah, you're lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know goddamn well you was not running around with no cockroaches for pets. Mm -hmm. And hey, Charlie says it's documented that Elvis was a pedophile who enjoyed sex multiple underage uh, with multiple underage girls, but nobody's talking about ripping his music from streaming platforms and banning his films. Trump, let's see, do, 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 do. go all the way. Trump got how many sexual assault allegations against him? Nineteen. Oprah counted nineteen. Oprah counted Michael Jackson as a friend in life, but dragged his legacy. However, she let Harvey Weinstein, another friend, accused of sexual assault, make it. So what you say, but um, say what you um, say, but you don't see them digging up their deceased icons and dragging their names through the mud for the dummies with poor comprehension skills. I'm not defending or condoning, but questioning. The American media has always been against black people, especially black males. They raped and pillaged and murdered us, but got the world looking at us like we're the bad guys. Fuck out of here. I said it. 30 years of controversy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, and then, but you get people who like, well, you know, we shouldn't be talking about elves. We talk about our own. No, God damn. We're going to talk about all, everybody. Mm -hmm. We need to get out of that habit because that's what white supremacists does. Right. Well, you don't get to question us. Right. Right now, your head is on a chopping block. So right now, we're going to talk about y'all. Y'all don't get, y'all, you, mm -hmm. you don't, I wish you would try to bring up some white people. But to your point, we should be examining our Elvis Presley. I mean, he's a notorious uh, pedophile. Mm -hmm. What, the Pr Priscilla Presley was 14 when they met. Yeah. When they met. And he ended up marrying her and was still with her until he died, mm -hmm. wasn't he? With her until no, died, or no. they divorced, but... Yeah. They spent a long time together. Mm -hmm. So why are we, and to your point, demonizing this man? You know why? Because black people ain't froggy enough to mm -hmm. question white people. We only going to do it to our own. And so Sin says, I'm a Michael Jackson fan. I'm an Oprah fan. I love what she's built. I don't like that she did Neverland thing. I wish she would have. I think she did it because she felt in her heart. Uh, let's see. It felt in her heart he was guilty, and as a victim of sexual abuse, she went on um, emotion. I wish she could have interviewed about this. Um, he can't defend himself. I want her to talk about this, and absolutely. But the other part of that too isn't is because Oprah spent a lot of time with Michael yes, Jackson. Yes, she did. Uh, did she interview him like two, three, four times? They hugged that, up. And how many of you guys remember that saying when you go into people's house? What, what you see in this house stays, stays in this house. Stays in this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oprah's been, um, she's interviewed Michael Jackson a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. She called him her very good friend. Mm -hmm. and, and then you turn around, I mean, interviewed his family even. So it's like, I get it. Maybe emotions took over. But to me, Oprah's very smart. I think because she's been through a lot, you know, especially having people hoodwink her on the show a bunch of times. So I think she was probably able to take a step back and say, okay. I mean, you guys remember when she went through the whole beef thing? When mm -hmm. the beef industry in Texas was suing her because she said about the mad cow disease, I stopped eating beef cold, Oprah being the guru of everything. You know, they claimed that she affected their uh, meat cells, mm -hmm. their beef cells. And so Oprah, from that point, I'm sure she's gained a lot of wisdom in that I can't just really be going out, out there saying everything. Mm -hmm. She won, by the way, but Babu says... 
Michael Jackson fundamentally denounced his race and turned himself into a little white girl. That's a lie because on plenty of occasions, Michael Jackson says, I'm, I'm black. black. I'm black. I know I'm black. So that's a lie. That's a lie that's perpetuated through the media that Michael Jackson didn't want to be white. I mean, black. It is medically proven that Michael Jackson had been a LIGO. If you do the research, the coroner's report says that he indeed suffered from vitiligo. Mm -hmm. All right. So the plastic surgery thing, that's a whole other story. But Michael Jackson never denounced being black. He's on record a whole host of times saying, that he's proud to be black. Yeah, you know, and when it comes to the plastic surgery, um, there's a whole bunch of stars that get addicted to that. Yeah. L little Kim. I mean, you got all kinds of people that just turn themselves right. into something else. But it's Michael just... Jackson was unapologetically right. black. Um, and then you also say, and making the feminization of the black male popular. Michael Jackson didn't make he, that he didn't popular. That. You want to, let's take it back to little Richard. No. I mean, we can go back well, further than don't, that. We don't have to go, go back further than that. Uh, the bad album. The man was grabbing his balls. All goddamn all day long. How much more? Michael Jackson, you know? right? He made grabbing your balls popular. Here, yeah, I ain't got that. I'm sure I did the shit once or twice. Well, well, remember, remember in the '70s, all brothers kept grabbing their package. Right. So uh, that, that's a lie that people <laughs> tell. You know, and Michael Jackson didn't make being effeminate popular. Hell, like I said, Little Richard went back, and that's mm -hmm. see. I'm not saying you don't know your history, but if we know our history, I saw an interview with Terrence Trent Darby on uh, Arsenio Hall show today where he was saying, especially in America, if men want to make it in the music industry, that Hollywood and the music industry almost expects for them to be effeminate. That's just how they have to come out in order to Billy sell Porter. records. So, I mean... Billy Porter. But then you say... We're always talking about the war against black people, but then we act like the enemy do not come from within. I mean, that's that's misapplied. I mean, again, Michael Jackson never denounced being black. Yeah. And Marcus says, um, I really believe what Oprah Winfrey thought was that her word was gospel in the black community because it was so powerful in the white community. She is one mm -hmm. of those people that misunderstands uh Black people in a major way, black people may have joked about Michael, but there was always a different kind of loyalty that went above and beyond reproach. Yeah, I mean, she just, she is just that one black woman that white people love. They're comfortable with. They're comfortable with her, you they know. They all love us. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I remember when she had that stupid movie, Beloved, Beloved, or whatever, by Tori Morrison. Tank. Tank. And she cried because she thought that her loyal fans would support her. She was upset because they didn't go out and see it. I'm like, I went and saw that in the movies, and white people were getting up like, this is weird. I mean, I almost mm -hmm. left. It was super weird. And so, uh, Tay says, a lot of people who siding with Michael Jackson are people who have no real history of Michael Jackson. You say, are siding against Michael Jackson are people who have no real history of Michael Jackson. I never really cared about Oprah, but I could really give a frog's ass about her, mm. <laughs> about her now. I refuse to entertain Michael Jackson slander of any kind. Michael Jackson is an innocent man. Let him rest. Absolutely. So uh, that's why we're confused, Tay. Like, okay, so what is re Oprah's real agenda here? And then Sydney says, that um, might kick, um, this might kick to federal court as well. So what, the, the lawsuit? And then Satan says, I really feel like many men feel our, like R. Kelly wasn't wrong. Women too, is something wrong with that. He married a 15-year-old girl when he was 27-year-old man. Isn't that enough? No, I agree. Um, I think a lot of people, and you know who it is? It's like his real super fan base who is mm -hmm. like, I don't care. Um, and you Mostly know, women. Um, yeah, I went on some thread. I remember that thing I said yes. yesterday um, when R. Kelly was walking out of um, jail for the second time. He had this little swagger about him. And you go in the comment section, and one was like, ooh, look at his bow leg. Ooh, he got some good D, I bet. Ooh, and look at it work. All the money we raised. And, 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 and there was a woman that was walking out. That was just hysterical. Just touched my hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was. So, yeah, so she I didn't think care about the those people are just his fans, and they don't care. I mean... It's kind of hard to suspend your disbelief about people you mm -hmm. like, but sometimes you have to say, you know what? He's not a good guy. Right. He, I, I, I'm one of those people who believe R. Well, Kelly needs help. You know, you know what? I'm going to have to agree with you because it's hard for me to believe Ike Turner did the things he did to Tina. You cannot break a woman's jaw and then they go out and sing 30 seconds later. It just doesn't happen. Stop it. So. And Marcus says, not seen or, or not seen or, um, Kelly is not guilty, but I'm not saying R. Kelly uh, is not guilty, but I am saying that there is Donald Trump and he does sit in the highest office in the land. Hello. There are pedophiles in the judicial system making judgment calls and they are abusing the law when it comes 
uh, to black people and black men, especially, absolutely, I mean, how many times do you see or hear about uh, politicians getting wrangled up for some um, sex crimes with kids mm -hmm. and women? In a and, bathroom. Yeah, just like every day, but yeah, we want to, I mean, come on now. How long has, how long have we been talking about R. Kelly? We've been talking about R. Kelly for what two months, three months, yeah, now? Two, three months now, like every day. It's like because I, I'll see ten comments or uh, posts in a row sometimes about R. Kelly and, on my timeline, and, and then it started rolling and rolling and getting bigger, yes. and bigger and bigger. And but so yet they, Trump is just out there grabbing the, the who has eight thousand. They said two months ago this man has told over eight thousand lies, out reply, doesn't pay taxes. I mean, it's all out there, right? And nothing is done. If Obama had done that once. They would have strung that We'd have been looking for nigga. Obama. Yeah, strung that And Tay says, Kitty, Kitty Kelly. Yeah, we were Kitty saying Kelly, Kitty Kelly yeah. um, wrote that book about Oprah and all was pissed that someone would write a false story about her life. Now look at what she did to Michael's. Like, well, what did they say? One good turn or screw deserves another. Deserves yeah. another. Mm -hmm. Hello? Exactly. And Al says, Oprah should be ashamed for those terrible movies beloved and women of Brewster's place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I didn't like Beloved. The Women of Brewster Place was ever, but Beloved yeah. was like... Yeah, it was three hours long. I mean... Out of all the stuff you could have made... Is and wait, wait. What was stupid about her back then? I remember when that thing went down. You expected white women to go I seen a to a of, movie about I, I, slavery? Listen, Donovan. I was there in the movie, and I seen white people leaving, leaving. like, ah! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me get my goddamn money back. Right, right. Right. I, I mean, I'm not saying that, that the story wasn't based on truth, because it was based on a true story. Because there were women that were killed, rather killed their kids. And so there was bees and stuff coming out of their mouth. No, no, that, yeah, that, that's all thing. But I, I'm just saying, in the slavery, uh, the slave narrative, yeah. there were women that would rather kill their kids. Oh yeah, and put them in slavery. I, yeah, that, so it was kind of a bio picket, picket. That movie was but stupid. But to expect your white woman base to go in there and be like, oh yes, she did. Yes. She cried about it on one of her shows when they did. That's I, I look it up. You got white people that won't believe the damn dash camera riding the king <laughs> getting his ass whooped. I mean, come on. Right. And Joe Nelson's Oprah and Gale has only exposed themselves. Um, those who um, in their beds with, um, who's in their beds with, and as well as how media is used to destroy black people, they need to do a documentary on surviving George Washington. Damn. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson and all of the presidents yep. minus the black mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like we can just close our eyes and just throw a dart and just wherever we land, we can start with those. I mean, it's like, it's not, so it's not like there's not information out there about other people. We just choose to like dogpile our own people. Mm -hmm. And Cindy says, we never um, will leave Hollywood clean. They've been messing with Michael since he brought the Beatles catalog. And mm -hmm. he says that. Mm -hmm. He says that, uh, you know, I, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm a dead man walking. Mm -hmm. They're not going to rest until they get this. Right, you know, but you would think when, when, when he knew that, just give it up. Right, and then mm -hmm. so, uh, Charlie, uh, you're tagging people. Cool. And then uh, it says, and then you also say, uh, let's see, Oprah Winfrey is building her brand, Oprah. Uh, but I thought Oprah already had a brand built. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm like, what, what's really going on here? It's the next phase. Something going on. And Jonelle says, Oprah is an opportunist and her girl, Gail, is too. They love black exploitation. There's no doubt in my mind that you're right. But I mean, just look on, on yeah. look at the stuff that's on there. Yeah, it's just trash. Um, Gail is not a, a contract journalist. A lot of people think that because you're on TV and you're broadcasting the news that you're a journalist, most of those people are actors. Well, she's probably not a journalist per right. se, but she is contracted through CBS. Or yeah, no, no, I understand that. that, but I'm just saying most yeah. of the people you see out there, they're actors. They look good or, you know, they're there for a certain... Like reason. Michael Strahan. Right. The football yeah. player. Yeah, he's not right. a journalist. You know. uh, and Marcus says, I don't think he is, because no. he went to school for him. Uh, Marcus says, the notion that Michael Jackson wants to be white is disturbing... A disturbing line. When is it uh, documented? When, when it is a documented fact that much of the reason he went into publishing was to assure black artists, yes, indeed, um, that they would uh, get their publishing back. He gave Chuck Berry his publishing back and gave Little Richard his publishing back, too. And those are known facts. Mm -hmm. Those are facts. Facts. Right. So to say that Michael Jackson was running from blackness and did not help black people is a goddamn lie from the pit of hell. Right. And, and we people, need to stop saying that yeah. stuff. And a lot of people that don't give Michael a lot of credit, he was a very astute business person because after Thriller was made, he was talking to Paul McCartney, who had a lot of wrote a lot of songs. Right. And he asked him for some advice, and he said, "Mr. McCartney, uh, you know, I'm looking at investing in something. What would you invest in?" And Paul McCartney was investing in catalog. Correct. And, and, and Paul said, "Hey, this is what I'm doing." 
And so Michael said, wow, that's a good idea. I think I'll buy your songs. And he thought it was joking, joking. until he bought it. Exactly. Absolutely. And uh, and Tay says... And Paul McCartney was masking and, and, the job. And they had you... And that's what I was telling Al. I said, you didn't see them hanging out after that. Yeah. They did the girl is mine. And, and say, uh, say, 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 after that, crickets. Mm -hmm. And Tay says... Also, it was noted in his um, autopsy that Michael Jackson had been a libel. Yes, yes, it's like, read. Stop letting white people and all these other cuckoos tell you that Michael Jackson hated to be black. Yeah. It says documented by the coroner that this right. man had um, certifiable been a libel. I mean, the stuff, the information is there. Right. I hate Steven laughing. He says, laugh my ass off. Uh, Al says, you new niggas with the hotep niggas. Right. Oh, uh, that's what somebody called us earlier. Yeah. And Al <laughs> says, after um, Geraldo Rivera got beat up on his show, he didn't have too many blacks on the show after that, and his ratings suck. Elaborate more on it, Donovan. Because he's like, yes. you know, you watch the shit. Well, no, no. I have to do my research because I knew 20 years from now I would be doing a show like this. Here's the thing. Geraldo Rivera opened the door to this kind of concept. That's why Jerry Springer changed his format. Now, don't sit here and think when Oprah first started, she was just this no, chandelier. No, Oprah was in the mud, too. Yeah. Oprah was in the mud, yeah, too. Yeah, she, she yeah. brought the, the, the Klansmen on. And, I, all. and, so, and all the, she was doing gotcha stuff, too. And right. I remember a show where she said she was no longer going to be right. doing that. But that she, was, she was in the, in the, in the uh, pink style with Jenny Jones. Yes, exactly. What's the other cat? Ro um, Roddy Ma uh, Downey Jr. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. And, and all um, those uh, salacious cats. Yeah, yeah. She was at Ricky Lake. She, Ricky was, with, she was in the bed with all of them doing it. She tried to change the and, 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 and then it was an outrage when Jerry Springer's ratings started to outdo Oprah. Right. When Jerry was letting them fight on the right. show and stuff like that. So, right. And yeah. so it, it goes back a long way. But she started like everybody else. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and so uh, Cindy says that Michael Jackson, once his hair was burned during the commercial, he started his plastic surgery. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they said too. That's where he um sort of got some sort of a uh, pain pill addiction. Yeah, he got the pain. He pill was in addiction. a lot of pain. Uh, people don't realize that he had a third degree burn. Oh yeah, it, it burned him up. Yeah, uh, and Steve says beloved was trash. I mean, it was that was like, what is there anything worse than trash? <laughs> um, and then uh, Sammy says the casting couch modern but breaking absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, Oprah and Gail are completely in bed with white supremacy. I mean, it's just a fact. Mm -hmm. And Tay says, replying to Cindy, he was filming that Pepsi commercial. So well, let's see, he said, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the Pepsi commercial. And Babu said, like I said, Go ahead, I don't think it's buck breaking as much as it's um, the fear of exposing white supremacists. If Gail and Oprah had did this to those white people, we wouldn't even be having uh, this conversation. Admit it. People today are voyeurs and they love to see the dirt. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's why, I mean. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. I, I believe they are in bed with white supremacy. And, and it works because we are a very voyeuristic society. Ooh, I want to see what the Kardashians are doing. Well, or what this person is mm -hmm. doing. Oh, he, Michael, we didn't know Michael Jackson allegedly did that to mm -hmm. you. Like, to me... I don't want to hear these well, stories about kids well, allegedly being sexually... I, that well, doesn't... Well, I don't he, want to hear it. Well, here, here it is. You know, we're... we're uh... People are talking about reparations, something that is important in the black community that, that we are due to have. Right. But the most of our millennials and kids, what do they talk about? Cardi B, this, this, that. I mean, it's it just, it, it's crazy. What, you don't talk about Cardi B? Uh, no, I don't. Oh. Not when it comes to, no, I, I don't even know some of her music. I mean, I don't even know. But uh, but, but, but what I'm saying is, it's like you, you said all along, we like to be entertained. We like to be entertained. It's just a fact. So Oprah's, I think it backfired on Oprah as far as the black community. And, and admittedly, there's a lot of white Michael Jackson fans was like, not today, B. Right. Not today. Well, all I know is in Romania and Bucharest, they're That's upset. Right. Bucharest, <laughs> they turned it out. And Joe Nelson says, Michael Jackson dated Stephanie Mills, Brooke Shields, Priscilla Presley. He had women. And I think even um, Evan Ross is his son. <laughs> he yeah. was straight and loved, white, uh, and loved women. Yeah. Well, he, I'm going to have to disagree with the Stephanie Mills thing because Stephanie Mills was at that time married to Jeffrey Daniels of Shalimar. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> my, yeah, he, Michael Jackson said repeatedly, I'm not homosexual with me. He's probably a little, you know, eccentric. Well, he was scared, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but he, I, don't, I, I never got the impression that Michael Jackson was homosexual. Yeah, have you seen some of them coochies in the 70s? Woo! Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Sydney says the R. Kelly case might get kicked to federal court. Um, How? Based on what? Oh, 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 uh, the inner trafficking, if they get, get Oh, yeah, yeah, because they're, they're trying to get him for trafficking, I guess, a uh, minor to Detroit or something yeah, like that. State lines. Yeah, and, um, you're correct. And Al says, E-Bayou movie has some pedophile in it, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the one with uh, 
Jesse Smollett's sister and uh, uh, Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Wasn't he liking the little girl or something yeah. like that? It was weird yeah. as well. Yeah. And Steve says, Oprah agenda is making money point blank. She don't care about how she gets it there. You know, and I think it's just time people have that conversation about Oprah. Oprah, it... I would never, I would, I mean, I just, yeah, Oprah's for black people in Africa. I don't know all the philanthropy that she does. I'm sure she does some things, so I don't want to say she doesn't, but this thing here, if you ever doubt it, yeah, I mean, it's just unacceptable. Like, Oprah, you have no, like I said earlier, you have no moral standing to do what you're doing to Michael Jackson. You are, you got some skeletons that's hanging out your closet, too. Now, I want you guys to remember uh, D saying this today, because when the show moves to Houston... And, you know, we got to do our separate shows. I'm going to say the same thing. You owe me. <laughs> you we in the bed with white yes. supremacy. Yes, you went down there and took my show. And... Yeah. We got a wild part. We, we got, got a wild, wild. Okay. Uh, And Marcus says, and the most powerful thing is that Michael Jackson lived a long time in the adult age. And Andrew Robinson and James Satruck, or so you're talking mm -hmm. about uh, Wade, Wade Robinson, mm -hmm. and James Satruck, they had an ample time to attack I live in uh, Michael Jackson's with these accusations. I'm trying to uh, read your comment. And Oprah had ample time to fight a living Michael Jackson. Oh, fight, well, I guess you're trying to say while Michael Jackson was living. And she believed that, what she believed. But all three would not have even attempted this line uh, had he been alive. There would be death. Well, I don't know about be death, but it's just like, you know, um, per... Taj Jackson, a whole host of other people. It's another director. I posted on my page. Um, his name's Clyde somebody. Mm -hmm. He basically called Wade the ropes and a liar. He said this dude is a liar. Mm -hmm. That it's always been known that he's been an opportunist. He broke up uh, Britney and um, Justin because he was a dancer choreographer for Britney. Right, right. Ended up sleeping with Britney. He broke. Um, had, was instrumental in breaking up Prince and Mai Tai because he slept with Mai Tai. And that he just, um, he cheated on, uh, Michael Jackson actually hooked um, Wade and uh, his niece up. They were together like seven, eight years. She finally left him because he kept cheating on her. Mm -hmm. One of them was with Britney Spears. And so, I mean, the dude is not an angel. But yet, Oprah is helping to paint him to be that. And so, Tay says it was reported that fans paid his child support to get R. Kelly out of jail. I really need to understand how these women support him. I don't get it. Where were these women when I had my child support stuff? <laughs> Golly. Can you sing? <laughs> <clears throat> Swing low. That's why. That's why they didn't pay. It. That's why they didn't pay it, okay? Yeah, I mean, but you know what, Tay? I told Donovan the other day, I said, somebody's going to pay this man. This yes, man ain't going to be in it long. Yes, she I did. said, somebody's going to pay this child support. And I mean, there's women on this one thing I sent them admitting mm -hmm. we raised it. It worked. Yep. The money no raised funding, enough money. Said. But here's the funny thing, and that's why I was telling you, uh, R. Kelly is not broke. Um, he has basically, even the woman from the, that bailed him out the first time, uh -huh. she said she didn't use her money. And right now they are tracking down where did that money come Who from. Who is they? The government or whatever they're, they're doing. I mean, it's like, well, what, what do y'all really, is it? Do you, his scenario is to like be broke so a lot of people can't come right. after him. So if he's saying I'm broke and he's got his money hidden over here, hidden over, which is smart, but he's not broke. In right. The, per, per se of Donovan Sadiq. I almost called you the N word. You ain't broke. <laughs> the plan. And uh, Charlie says she is trying to keep her uh, quote unquote brand Oprah with the white people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because she knows that she ain't really making no. She making money. Uh, she and Tyler well, Perry. Well, she's got forty nine percent of uh, own network. Right. So, right, so they, they're making all money off of mm -hmm. black people that way. Because I doubt very seriously a whole host. I mean, it's probably some of white people are watching. Uh, the have and the have, have and have nots, and if love and you was wrong, I don't mm -hmm. want to be right. And all this garbage, mm -hmm. you know. So you're right, though. She's trying to, you know, yeah. The Weight Watchers. We ain't going to Weight Watchers, goddamn it. Right, okay. Right. Um, Just be a vegan. Right. You see how to turn it out for your girl here. <laughs> and Samuel says, "I was in a conversation sometimes. I uh, said um, I was in a conversation sometime. Said Oprah uh, wish was a part of the. Oh, that Oprah was a part of the boule. Mm, um, boule. I mean, she might be. I mean, it's it's possible. I have been talking against these women for a long time and trying to wake people up saying they, they aren't what they seem to be. I'm not saying she's a bad person, but she's showing you she's a bad person. Right. Oprah, I don't think Oprah's really for black people like that. And uh, Once they get says, the money. And Steve Coon and Harvey, another example. You, you, you just want to talk about Steve, don't you? No, I mean, <laughs> man. Once they get the money, he he's in a car with his wife. 
starting out and then he puts her on the streets. Right. That, yeah, it's going to come back to him. And Al says, maybe it's difficult for some MJ fans not to believe he slept with little boys. He said he slept with little boys, mm -hmm. but then he sleep, sleep right. with little boys. That's not a secret. The man, and that's, I like to counter that point with how many pedophiles do you know? I hope we don't know any. But just to say in a public eye, I said, oh, yes. I sleep with little boys all the time. Most pedophiles well, deny it all together. Well, 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 let's stop that right there. Here's the thing. I have a pedophile in my, in my family. He's gone to jail twice for rape of minors. Right. So how many of us can sit here and say, you don't know that? I, I'm very sure. But I'm saying, I'm sure when he was going of... through a trial, he wasn't saying, yeah, I was sleeping yeah, in a bed. Exactly. With him. And most pedophiles don't admit that. Yeah, so not admit that, but... Michael Jackson has clearly said that he's done that, but he's thinking it's normal. But what I'm saying is in our community, uh, that video sent me of the girl uh, arguing her mom accusing her of sleeping with the, oh, yeah. the boyfriend. And, yeah. I mean, we all, it, it's in the community. We know that. It's not a secret. It's, it's nothing new. Correct. And Cindy says, I will ask again, Again, do we believe that orange sun kids looking at Tyler <laughs> gr uh, grab any woman, his hands are too small. So he's saying, <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one. I don't know. And then uh, Charlie said, hey, it was cousin Ronnie Houston. Right, right. And Tay says, speaking of crazy white women, speaking of crazy white women, <laughs> did y'all see Idris on SNL last night? Oh, Idris. I saw the commercial. I didn't Idris really... Elba? Yeah, he was on there last uh, night. Last night, he did that privileged white women sketch, and it was hilarious. No, I didn't see mm. it. He wasn't cooning, was he? No. That's going to destroy my how I, I how I think about Idris Wait, I thought Elba. Wait, I thought you were from Melina. I'm, I... Melina. I have a few crushes. Crushes, okay, all right. Intellectual crushes. All right. Hey, uh, and Tay, uh, by the way, Tay got this beautiful couch that she uh, she got. I went to help her put it together. Nice. Very, 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 very nice couch. Cool. So, hope that's working out good for you, Tay. All right. And then Jonelle says, just think, Bill and Ruth killed nine people in the church <laughs> after you. he prayed with them, got Burger King and private jet and four million rays, because that's how white people roll. That's right. While we throw ours to... Do, 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 while we throw ours to the wolf, not saying they don't deserve punishment if they're wrong, but after over 400 years of evil, past and presently, being served to us by whites, who are whites to judge us black people, man and woman, up and tell the truth and shame these pale devils from these churches, uh, to, from the church to their president, to their sick media. Absolutely. I mean, mm. I agree. Who are you to, you know, to... To, I mean, to me, I'm just stuck on the fact that you're trying to tell us who to be mad at. Exactly. But you got a lot of, like, you should spend a lot of time in your backyard, you know? And Al says... Well, mm -hmm. no, uh, let me cut you off. No, no, no. Uh, they're mad at the fact that we don't accept Kamala. Why aren't we voting for her? You know, how dare you black people look and examine her record? Because we gave her to you and you guys yes. rejected her. Because yes. that's what they, they're used to doing. They're just used and, to giving us and, our... And they're upset. They're right. upset at that. You'll get over it. We got you, Corey. What about Corey? No, we don't want that one either. You'll get over that too. Right. So, uh, and Al says, wouldn't it have been a problem if Soledad O'Brien would have interviewed R. Kelly? Um, I don't listen. I don't think it's the fact that they interviewed him as much as they, like if R. Kelly would have did all of that with me. I don't think I would have aired the interview. Right. Exactly. I think I would have aired on the side of okay for one. I'm this gonna take really a good. lot of heat. Is I mean, it doesn't look good for him, but right. now a lot of days, a lot of journals are trying to get that gotcha moment. It's all you about know? sensationalism. Sensationalism, ooh! And then of course everybody's putting a picture of her just, you know, ooh, Gail is unbothered. Her composure, yeah, her composure as this angry Negro, which is a, it's like we gotta pay yeah. attention to the signs. Mm -hmm. So to this world, you have this composed black woman. Why this raging? Look at how these angry Negroes act. Negro. These black men always act yes, like this. Yes, this angry black raging ape like acting black man. Yes, I mean it, but mm -hmm. we we don't understand the the picture the, of the what we're bigger saying. picture mm -hmm. of what's going on here. The so message. I don't know if so that would have done it. I think to me it's how it was how how it was portrayed. Right. If you will. I mean, I, I think a white man could have done the interview, or a white woman could have done the interview, like you said. That part where he's jumping around, we can't use that. Yeah, okay, good man, sit down and get composed. Yeah. Get your composure. Get your composure. Yeah, Same use. thing with Robin um, Roberts. Mm -hmm. Can't stand her can't either. Stand her. When she interviewed um, uh, Chris Brown, 
his people repeatedly asked her not to bring up Rihanna. This had mm -hmm. happened a couple years, I guess, or so yeah. before she interviewed him, and they repeatedly asked her not to do it. What she does this bald head heifer do? Yeah. She asks him repeatedly, and he gets mad. And so they write the narrative that he's going ape, mm -hmm. which he didn't go ape with her. He went mad. He got mad after it was stuff, over, yeah. and they released the story that Chris Brown is going, uh, you know, ham and that. But it's like, but tell the whole mean. story. You yeah. pissed me off. You right. kept asking me something when I asked you not to do that. Anything to trying to get the, the gotcha. Anything to make the black man uh, fit their narrative and make us look bad. That's what they're gonna do. Right, and that's what it, that's what it did. Not saying uh, R. Kelly looking bad outside of what he's uh, accused of, he but just right. the whole he's ranting and raving. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch the interview, by the way. I've seen because it. Because if anything, uh, I really was like feeling sorry for him. I, because right. he was having a meltdown. Yes, I felt, uh, you know what, this is going to sound odd. I felt sorry for mm -hmm. R. Kelly because like here this man is, I mean, not feel sorry for him because of what he's going through per se, like the trial and stuff, yeah, but legal part, here's but. this man in front of the whole world having a meltdown, and she's just nonchalant about it, you like, know? Yeah, nigga, meltdown. Right. I did this, mm -hmm. or I helped do this. I'm going to say she did see, it, but she helped And, and the thing is, his image in the uh, entertainment world, that's going to affect his image now. You know, well, the R&B gangster singer, whatever, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So and you never know. A lot of women are probably like, oh, well, we already know that because they were like, oh. right. And Marcus says, and let's be real. What is more disturbing than Elvis Presley mother adopting Pris Priscilla so that he can live with, she can live with Elvis legally and he can molest her from the age of 13 until she was legally able to, uh, let's see, legally, ah, legally, uh, let me see. I lost my comment. Are legally able to become his wife, still accelerated hero with evidence. That is a fact. Oh, absolutely. Well, no, I may have to disagree with that. And I'm going to say this because this is based on military fact. Mm -hmm. Priscilla Presley was a dependent living in Germany with her officer father. Um, once she became of age, the father let her go and be with Elvis. But, but she was still underage. Yeah, no, right. he, they allowed them to date underage and stuff like that. But uh, the mother adopted, Elvis's mother adopting her, that, that's not true. You ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. Amanda says, I love Cardi like I love me, like I love you, um, Big Daddy. That's right. That, you, you dog all right. Uh, and when I, are you coming home? <laughs> Amanda, Deanna says, what's your beef for Cardi B? Save it. No, no. I, I, like I said, I don't listen to her music, so because she's on everybody's shit. Yeah, so wait, she said, what's your beef for Cardi B, Donovan? No beef. And, no, oh, uh, okay, hold on. Now, Cindy says, leave Cardi alone, Donovan. Not today. <laughs> no. Not today. I have no problem with Cardi B. She says she's not black. Hey, that's her stance. That's her stance. Okay, and then uh, Charlie says, they uh, they hate Michael Jackson because he gave all the money from Pepsi Cola to the Burns Center in L.A. I heard he did, he did that too. He, he, said, he also said, does Oprah have her money in a black bank? And yeah, I doubt it. Uh, Charlie says also, name one black community that Oprah Winfrey has helped in the U.S. Um, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know specifically. But she might have. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of times people don't necessarily uh, I, uh, talk about the things she does. Yeah, uh, I, I do know she gives to her alma mater. I do know that. Okay, so she does. Tennessee yeah, so I don't want to say she doesn't do yeah. anything. And Al says, do you think past talk shows hosts like Mike Douglas, Murray Griffin, Dinah Shore, Sally, Jesse Raphael, Jack Benny, and Dick Cavett didn't care about black people? Um... I don't know. I don't know a lot about them, but I would imagine those are some old school well, cats. Well, I, I can tell you this. A lot of them cared about enough to bring Muhammad Ali on there to bring their ratings up. Right. Yeah, right. They have mm -hmm. people like that. Mm -hmm. And hey, Quincy, he says, swing no. When you say <laughs> swing no. <laughs> they also say, I really believe he uh, paid um, it his self and lied so they can't take his money. Talking about R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that he paid it himself and lied. Yeah. 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 That, possible. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He's... Keeping it alone. And, and, and Tay says, sorry, y'all going to be mad, but I love Cardi. <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, Cindy she... says, question, Donovan Sadiq, can you hide money after 9-11 asking for a friend? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Tell but... us off to the show because we don't yes. want the fans to be coming to yeah. know what they're doing. Well, the thing is, look at what Donald Trump has, has done. Some of the things that he's done, it's a shell game. You can do it. Okay. And he's gotten away with it for a lot of years. Okay. And not only him, a lot more white people are doing it. Got it. And then Tay says, FYI, Weight Watchers are struggling right now. Um, what, um, Oprah is not helping them. And Al says, the black woman paying to get R. Kelly out of jail are probably the same ones not spending their child support, their children's uh, probably spending their, not spending their child, their children's support money on their kids. Um, no, no, they're, they're taking that child support, getting R. Kelly out of jail. 
<laughs> what he said. <laughs> it's to me, it's real. It's it's odd, but it's not odd because you think about like we talked about this before: the serial killers and all kind of people have these women going to be pen pals and giving them money and throwing mm -hmm. the draws at the barbed wire fence and stuff. So it's not really odd that mm -hmm. some of these cuckoo women are doing these type of things. And Tammy says Michael Jackson says. He shared his bed with little kids. He didn't sleep in the bed with them. He said he slept on the floor. He made it clear, right? So right. none of that is a secret, right, well, Tammy? Well, and here's the thing. At the end of the day, we don't know what went on behind closed doors. So we have to take the man at his word. Right. You know? Right. We don't have to, but you know what I mean? And there, says, there's no evidence to show that it's contrary to what he said. Right. And the taste says, no, he wasn't coming at all. I don't remember what that was by. And Marcus <laughs> says, um, I, he said, what is most dangerous also is that we are in a country under a government who does every immoral sexual thing under the sun. There are places that white people uh, pay to go and fulfill, let's see, uh, fulfill your sexual desires. And these people that sit on the highest courts in the land, these are people who are in government it's at its highest level. These are people, they decide who is right and who is wrong. Let that sink in. Absolutely. Yes, and Babu yes. says, in truth, it's not about uh, buck breaking. It's about uh, buck making. Uh, whenever these stories are, um, all these dying media outlets make bank. So with yes. all these stories. And when we um, had the conversation about Oprah, uh, as usual, Negroes came to her defense, accusing us of attacking our mm -hmm. own. She is not and has never been one of us. Boo nope. late. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, you try to have this conversation about o Oprah's up there with Jesus, Beyonce, Barack, and who else? Uh, some other people that you really just can't say anything about. Cardi. Uh, apparently, Cardi <laughs> B now. You know, I mean, I'm, Cardi B is who she is. She's yeah. a novelty. People like her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm old school hip hop, yeah. so, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, Cardi's yeah. just on top now. So, Get you an album or two and, you no, know, do your okay. thing. Remember we, we did that video when she first came out with the, uh, what is that, Red Bottoms? What was it called? Her first single that was really big? Bodak Yellow? Yeah, Bodak Yellow. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, we do our homework. Right. And Cindy says, my ex fiance uncle was a pedophile. He was sleeping with um, his goddaughter, lied. Um, at lied to, said she did not uh, know about, he did not know about her age. They got photos of him at all the parties. She was nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you not know about a nine-year-old age? At a party. Okay? Maybe you thought she was 10. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, 11. But, but what I'm saying is, and I'm glad Cindy brought that up, I said, I, you know, we, we, we act like we're shocked what R. Kelly did or what, you know, what he's uh, accused of. But we look, 15-year-old girl dating a 22-year-old man. And you know what? It's not shocking, but now I think because it's at the forefront, we just really need to address it. Mm -hmm. Not just necessarily R. Kelly, but pedophilia in our community mm -hmm. once and for all. Thank it just you. needs to be addressed. And Sammy says, I believe the minister said in his speech, a crucif uh, crucifixion of Michael Jackson. Michael got out of his bed and slept on the floor and gave the, child, the child his bed. One of the biggest acts of kindness is uh, mm -hmm. in a Muslim sure, home. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean... Again, of course, you know, people are going to, oh, why would a grown man sleep in a bed with a child? It's like I, I, all these interviews that I saw his nephew do, all these journalists kept asking him, like, y'all ain't got nothing there. Y'all trying to get Michael, that gotcha moment. Michael going. Jackson was indicted on 11 counts, and on the 11 counts, he was found not guilty. End of story. Absolutely not, not guilty. guilty. And Marcus says, what has, um, what has scared over and whites in the media alike uh, I read your comment the way it was it says is that oh, what has scared Oprah and white people in the media alike is that black people actually decided to make up their own mind and stand united mm -hmm. in defense of something when we know the media is used to giving us our truth while also giving us our timeline to forgive and forget absolutely mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what does uh, 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 Professor uh, Klump do? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Because same thing with Kamala Harris. They had no idea that black people were actually going to say, hell no, not today. And the same thing with Oprah. I don't think she... Mm -hmm. um, anticipated the blowback she was going right. to get, especially from the black community, mm -hmm. for doing what she did. Yeah. Hey, the thing, you said peace uh, muscles. And on the Kamala well. thing, it was especially the people in California, because if you're living in Baltimore or whatever, you don't know what's going on here in California, and it took all these people that were jailed, right. Ooh, and some uh, of us that are still in jail right. innocently, to say, hey, no, 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 this ain't who you think it is. I didn't realize I was so far behind the comments, and Monty said, bald headed heifer had cancer. Talking mm -hmm. about, well, she don't have cancer now. Is that you? I know, uh, Robin Roberts. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I know she had cancer. 
I'm talking about. I, I'm, I'm not talking about her having cancer, being bald headed. I'm talking just yeah. bald headed in general. In general, yeah. yeah. I, that's me being mean spirited, if you will. That's my sister. And Cindy says, however, I learned the network controlled the reporters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Al says when Ayala interviewed DMX, he flipped out on her. Yes, remember that when our Ayala interviewed DMX, he flipped out. It's yeah. like why show that? You know. But of course, we know why. Marcus says it's also um, well known that the singer Seal um, said. He was in a room with Oprah when she was told to be quiet on, on Harvey Weinstein. Now, for those who want to stand still, consider her credible. Or still consider her credibility. Or, wait, credible. Uh, still consider her credible. This takes away all credibility. And find me one single article where she responds to allegations against Harvey Weinstein. Well, you, exactly. She's not going to. She's she not. tried to address it kind of sort of at the Oscars, but she never, to my uh, recollection called him by name. Mm -hmm. And John Nelson says, clearly the white media is the greatest weapon aimed against us to keep us in a negative and our moral state will take the weapon from them. We in our ignorance, um, in, in our ignorance and the degenerate state, give the, their media, uh, let's see, um, do, do, do. Too much ammo. We should never expect a positive, true, positive image of black men from white media. They will work to crush any positive of black people before the masses sooner or later, as whites have done. Damn, they went to the grave and dug up Michael Jackson for negative attention, and then literally they're talking about exhuming his body. And Amanda says, Cardi B says she wasn't black. Lies. She said, <laughs> she said, if I ain't black, where did I get this nappy hair? And if, if Al says party, write it down. Right there. Al says party breed, party breed broke Beyonce and Garth Brooks attend a party breed. <laughs> Cardi party B, B broke uh, uh, Beyonce and Garth Brooks attend this record at here at the Houston Livestock Show uh, in Rodeo <clears throat> by 300 people. Wow. Uh, and uh, 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 Tammy says Michael also said that the parents were in the same house. Yeah, they knew. Mm -hmm. Al says. Well, we were talking about those the, that that one generosity that Michael did with us that. Shady family. Oh, the cancer uh, uh, patient who lied to people. And Al says, when me and my sister were kids, my grandma once said, y'all booty is just for an exit. Your booty is for an exit and not an entrance. Mm, mm, mm. Depending on who you ask. Yes. Uh, and Sydney says, what pissed them off after the Michael Jackson trial? And he had a mini concert outside yeah, the car. Yeah, about the, the car. I, they don't care about us. Not quite as Bucharest. <laughs> yes, he but, was Bucharest, but... <laughs> but yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And Tay says, Michael was um, had sleepovers with kids because he was trying to recreate the childhood he never had. Michael mm -hmm. seemed like a good man who had a terrible childhood and just wanted to do right by other children who didn't have a lot in life. And that's what he said. That's what his family has said. His um uh, nephew said, imagine being Michael Jackson who has worked since he was eight. Said he, in order for him to just go to the movies, he had to close the whole thing down. Right. He never had, um, and he said he would ask them all the time, what's it like to have a go-to birthday party? Mm -hmm. What's it like to like hang out with your friends? Because he never got to do mm -hmm. that stuff. And Donnell says, exactly, white's old, um, and step near death fly to Africa. To, oh, they saw uh, the near death. They fly to Africa to have sex with young Africans. Another point is that the police in our poor neighborhoods prying on our young children sexually. Um, we need a hundred percent separation. Oops. Uh, 100% separation and detox from this white nation. We must have a full and complete freedom. The worst is yet to come as long as we are within the confines and regulations of European Zionist America. Yeah, a lot of people have argued we need to separate. That I mean, that's going to take a lot of work, but I mean, I tend to agree with you. And Marcus says, Neely Fuller said, you will never know the efforts um, being made to control black people's way of thinking and how they live. He said that every single detail from the smallest to the biggest is being... Uh, dissected 24 hours a day. America has 1,800 think tanks around the world. We have a few. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, Neely Fuller Jr. Um, is one of the founders of defining racism in America. Um, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, RIP, um, studied under Neely Fuller Jr. Um, she credits him to a lot of the work. But yes, um, he is always on the money. And Charles, what's happening? He says, catching the tail end, both of Bernie Sanders people. Oh, shoot. Uh oh. We're not going to vote for Bernie for, um, well, for one, that he's not, um, he's not, he doesn't want, he doesn't believe in uh, reparations for black people, even though he believes in uh, reparations, reparations for, for Jews. Jews. So, mm -hmm. he just can't have my vote. 
But you guys should check out somebody named Andrew Yang. This yes. dude is um this is this guy, I mean, it's t worth looking into. Yeah, Andrew Yang, look at his interview on the Breakfast Club. And Cindy says, just remember what um uh, Melissa Harris Perry said. They wanted her to do uh to be a bedwinch. She says, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not gonna be your mammy, and she kept pushing. Yep. Yep. She, uh, so yeah. See, but we in the money game out here. Right. We in the money game. Where, you gotta... is, where is Melissa? I haven't seen her. You know, she, she does her little book tours and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, in turn. Uh, Steve Harvey, you know, we, we can't do what white folks do. We got to sell our integrity because I don't want my family. Cooney nigga, get your ass up out of here. Continue. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> you all right? Okay. All right. Marcus says, and let's not forget Wade Robson's father committed suicide after these allegations yes. fell through. Uh, you don't kill yourself if you're telling the truth. You kill yourself if you built a big scale around your children and it fell. Well, remember with Wade Robson, Robson, however, uh, he initially the, uh, uh, said that Michael Jackson didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, as his nephew, uh, Michael Jackson's nephew, tells that uh, Wade Robson was the first one on the witness stand. Yes. He says, you don't put your star witness as the first witness who could potentially say you did something to him. He says, you know, uh, Wade was 20 in his 20s at the time when he testified. Because now I guess Wade is saying he was scared. And he was like this bullcock. And you had you were in the confines of the, the court, had all these sheriffs around you in your 20s. Michael Jackson can't harm you. You're the first person on the stand. And you could have very easily said Michael Jackson did something to me, but he vehemently denied it repeatedly. And then they brought in uh, Macaulay Culkin and uh, what's his name? Corey Feldman. Yeah, which kind and of like Corey Feldman is kind of, kind of now apologizing for defending him, although he didn't say he did anything. He just, right. you know, I guess he doesn't want to be ridiculed, if you will. Yeah, brought in all that little but, foolishness. So, you know, that it's, they're saying that Wade is mad because up until he didn't get the gig for Michael Jackson Cirque du Soleil, remember mm -hmm. he had that um, Michael Jackson one in Vegas, he didn't get the job to be the choreographer or the director, and and then that's when it went downhill because I guess his gravy train is dry, drying up in Hollywood, um, and he needed to make some money, and this is the story that he concocted with James Sachuk, let's say, because James even said well, I didn't realize that I was abused until I heard Wade's story. So then I realized that I was abused too. It's like, come on, dude. Al, not reading that one either. Nice try, though. <laughs> and uh, Jonell says Bernie Sanders don't desire reparations, which only shows what he thinks about black people. But the damn so-called Jews got reparations, so Bernie can burn with. Um, it burn with its exploitation tactics. With right. Its exploitation okay. tactics. Well, I, I applaud you for saying that, and I, I am not disagreeing with you, but you also have to give the man his credit because if it wasn't for Bernie, we wouldn't be talking about these issues at all today. He's the one, uh, 2016, they didn't talk about uh, reparations. They didn't talk about uh, universal health care. They didn't talk about these things. Right. So you got to give the man his due for bringing these issues up. Now, as for me... I'm a Bernie supporter, but is he getting my vote? No. Yeah, I mean, you can't say you 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 cool with giving your people you money, but you don't have black money. people money. Right. I'm telling you guys, look up Andrew Yang. He's not necessarily talking about reparations either, but this man talking about giving everybody 18 and over $1,000 a month tax-free mm -hmm. to do what you want to do with it, to alleviate the stress of living in America. I mean, that sounds good to me, just off the rip. You know what? And, and a lot of other stuff he's talking about. Yeah. So uh, the money, obviously, is the one that catches your attention. And I'm going to tell you guys this. If, if if that idea ever came to fruition, you better start buying some marijuana stock. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what a lot of the money's going to go to. Among other things, yes. okay? Mine's going to the damn bank. Right, right. And Marcus says, and the strongest defense of Michael Jackson is that the FBI was in the, uh, the man's life for more than 10, 10 years. And that a court... A uh, court put him through a trial and found him uh, not guilty 100%. So that means Oprah and white media, it's now saying that the law cannot defend white people. It can only incarcerate. Um, I'll find him guilty. I mean, no, absolutely. I mean, guys, so what, what else do we need? The man who was vindicated in the court of law. FBI didn't find, I mean, 10 years. Hell, you investigate me for 10 years. You're going to find me doing something. 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 I mean, I'm just saying it's so all y'all looking for pedophilia without whatever you're looking for. Y'all didn't find none of that. But yet mm -hmm. Oprah is like, I believe these guys. Why and, 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 Oprah? And, and it ain't like it is it, 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 it ain't like it's Andrew uh, Yang. Yeah. 
and it ain't like it's hard to find. He's a public official, so all his stuff is out there. It ain't like he's going to be, like, disappeared. Right. Mm -hmm. Look up Andrew Yang on The Breakfast Club. He did an interview, I think it was a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, this dude. Yeah, he's talking some. He stuff. he got it down to a science. I mean, I was like, I'm definitely interested. I mean, he. I think more people need to know about him. He's talking some really good stuff, you know. And so, um, and Charles says, see how much reparations you get from any neoliberal corporate Democrat horse candidate. Well, God. Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, Charles Clyburn, a black man, says, forget about it. A black man. Charles, you can't tell me that you're cool with Bernie. One, uh, cool with giving his people reparations, but not cool with giving your people reparations. He's so? cool with it. He but signed I, off I, on I mean, it. I'm asking Charles, like, how are you cool with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Bernie too, but I mean, he's just unapologetic. Like, no, mm -hmm. I don't think we should give black people reparations. Right. Right. I mean, it said that it's going to take us to the year 2030, 2030 something. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It's going to take us 200 something years to catch up. To catch up. To even come close to closing the wealth gap. Are you going to be here 200 and some years? Nope. I know I'm going to try to be. Mm -hmm. Although y'all see me drinking this soda. <laughs> I, I needed the energy today. I've been up since God knows when. Mm -hmm. But uh, So we need to do something to close the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just do. And so Marcus says, I would like you and Donovan to do a breakdown of that $1,000 a month for any black person over 18. See if two numbers are possible and realistic. Well, on his show, I forget how he goes into it. But he, he breaks down why it's easy to do. He says it's not mm -hmm. hard to do. It's um, very easy to do. He breaks it down. I can't remember all that he said. But Andrew Yang on The Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. um, but for a black, for $1,000 a month for any black person over 18, that's a lot of money. Yep. I mean, for one person, that's $12,000 extra a year. Some people don't even make that in a year. Right. So are you getting an extra $12,000 to do what you want to do it to perhaps live a little bit better, not maybe work some extra overtime, spend some time with your kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe more mamas could come home instead of being out there having to work because they're trying to pay for daycare or help pay the car notes or whatever. That thousand dollars a month may help some of these people stay home you to raise want, their children. And at the end of the day, that money's gonna go right back to the economy. We gonna buy shoes. Well, we gonna... Yeah, but I see. But this is where we need to be having those conversations. Right. Okay. If we're going to get the, because he says, if you elect me, you're getting this thousand dollars. And he says, uh, potentially, he would even like to see raising it to two thousand dollars in some mm -hmm. cases. So, and Kamala Harris is jumping on uh, something similar. She to wants that. to do 500. Right. I, I think, yeah, for to, to help mm -hmm. with rent or something, yeah. which is cool too. But hey, if you listen but to notice, his plan, she doesn't have any ideas. She jumps on other people's ideas. It's right. Like, oh, I love the idea. But he has a plan for everything. I mean, it's like very, very detailed. I was mm -hmm. blown away by this guy's message. And Al says, Use common sense. How stupid would I be with all the crazy stuff in the garage? My way past to tell a bad joke and keep quiet. No plan. This stuff isn't me. I'm fighting for my effing life. I have no idea what you said. Oh, what? I, you didn't get... yeah. Uh, it's, that, that's what R. Kelly said, kind of, kind of, sort of. See, I didn't see the interview, so that yeah. went over my head, I guess. But I mean, so. I don't see any more comments, but yeah, somebody like it, Andrew Yang. I mean, mm -hmm. we need to check him out. Right. I'm still waiting for Charles to tell me why he's cool with Bernie giving um, reparations to his people and not black people. And John says, I give Bernie his credit on some things, Donovan, but it's time for us to be paid in full. Oh, absolutely. And not be pacified. Amends must be made by all means. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Everybody else gets their money. Right. But we go, wow. No, I don't I, think black yeah. people need to get it. Yeah, no, I'm with you 100%. What I'm saying is, though, you got to give the man due because the Democratic Party or the, they weren't talking about that. None Correct. Of the, none of this stuff would have ever come up. Right. If Because like I said, uh, look at the Democratic Party now. Now they, they're talking about their progressives. Are they? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and Charles says a federal jobs guarantee at living wage along with Medicare expansion, free health care, a green new deal by Bernie Sanders, 125 days. That's fine, but a lot of people already getting that kind of stuff. We're talking mm -hmm. about specifically for black people. I think we as black people need to stop, not saying this is you, Charles, but we as black people need to stop making excuses or saying, well, we getting Medicare, or we getting, yeah, I mean, it's truth be told, lots of people work, uh, black people work, uh, have government jobs, so I mean, mm -hmm. that's not nothing really revolutionary. Give us our money. 
Write me a check, dog. Run me my money. Exactly. That way I can go buy some land and or go do whatever I want to do with my reparations. And and, and uh, when you write that check... <laughs> I just saw your stupid comment. Yeah. And when you write that check, we will be back next year for another one and right. another one run, and another one. Run me my money, son. Run mm -hmm. me my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm serious. <laughs> Right, and, uh, and uh, Jonah says, yes, sir, and Donovan, you fool. <laughs> says, one million black men against Demetri K, join us. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Cindy says, I can do a lot with a $1,000 a month. Yes. Hey, me and you both. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like, okay, we, listen. A thousand tax-free. A thousand tax-free dollars. You know what that would do for somewhere like New Rose, Louis Louisiana, Louisiana mm -hmm. where the cost of living is very... It's, you know, it's or people are struggling. Mm -hmm. You and, and you put a thousand dollars a month into economy per person, eighteen and over, into those economies. Look what's gonna happen. People are probably gonna live longer because they're not stressed mm -hmm. out. You get to make d decisions um, that you would normally make because you right. have a little. I mean, there's but, a lot of possible. I see. I'm not looking at it as a material thing. I can right. buy more stuff. I'm looking at it as I get a woosah moment. But, 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 but uh, let me ask you a question. If, if they do that, <laughs> if they do that, you need somebody to be at the bottom. We've always been at the bottom. And uh, to me, that's where they want us to stay. Correct. Right. You need a bottom dwelling people. So who's that going to be? Right. And yeah. Marcus said, <laughs> and we, um, are we to believe that 100% separation of the races as possible in the United States? It sounds really good, but it is not possible because the enemy is always right uh, next door, however, the radical, uh, however, do the radical, and with radical change, separation of the races with uh, mean, with which means living and going to a place where many fear, and I'm not even w uh, willing to talk about. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, at some point in time, I think I understand what you're saying. We got to stop being scared of us. Right. If we scared of us, hell, from every which way, but lose. I love black people. A lot of times, me and my daughter, um, I live by the neighborhood, if you will. Uh, me and my daughter walk to the to the store, and people stop and talk to me all the time. Mm -hmm. I, homeless people, on there, and she's like, "Gosh, you just talk not that I talk to everybody in a bad way, but I'm like, listen, if I'm scared of my people, right, then I can't talk. To, and you know, I, I I cannot perpetrate for black people if I'm scared to even have a conversation with our people. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it just is what it is. But we got to stop being afraid of us. Uh, Jonell says, screw you, Jonathan. <laughs> I, I added that part on. Right. He says, I'm rolling with Demetri K. Al says, mm -hmm. Demetri, you a fine mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> He's been watching Jackie Brown a lot lately. Right, with okay. your uh, Samuel Jackson walks into the bar and said, Jackie, you a fine motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and Charles is laughing. And uh, Tay says, elderly black folks can afford meds and food. Yeah, I mean, they got a system for them. Medi-Cal, mm -hmm. Medi-Cal Part A, B, right. the whole nine. So, yeah, we talking about people who, like me, <laughs> you know you know what I would do with a $1,000 extra a month? What? What would you do? I would probably, I would not probably say something. I would travel maybe more. Mm -hmm. You know, or just, like I said, I'm looking for the Wusa moment, the stress-free lifestyle. See, see, the thing is, if they give $1,000 to us, you got to do it for everybody. Well, they say they're going to give it to everybody. Everybody in America, 18 and over, are, are eligible for $1,000. Can't do that. He said, but look right. at it. He says he has a plan that it can be done. Right. I mean, hell, they... they no, they, that's they socialism. It. We can't do it. Run me you, my money. You got to work for everything you got. Even though I inherited all my money. I mean, I got money. a lot of people going to be... I ain't heard it all my money. Right. So. I thought a lot of people are going to be quitting their jobs. And some yeah. people might be making $1,000 a month and they're surviving. Like, you know what? I'm good, McDonald's. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and as Cindy said, some people might want to separate, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If what, you think about it, there's a lot of What afraid of is that we're going to take that money and pull it together. Right. Which we should, but other races are already separated, mm -hmm. whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. They're already separated. So why is it a big deal when black people say we want to separate? Um, <laughs> the Donovan's Wild Animal Kingdom. And uh, Al says, the, Demet uh, the Demetra can, can, can you, sh uh, the Demetra K show starts at three. The best time, hands down. Well, thank you, baby. <laughs> uh, 
And so, yeah. Um, yeah, you stink. Get out. I don't have it. I don't see any more comments. If you guys have any more comments, questions, I'll be more than happy to address them. Donnell says, as Malcolm X said, we are already separated. We just need to be awakened and self-productive in mind and action. We must build, defend what we build, and endure all adversity to our production. Um, our black children deserve a true future and their own at Absolutely. all levels. And it's up to us to give it to them. And hey, Gina says, hey, now I'm on the late show what are we talking about? Well, we were talking about Oprah and uh, Gail uh, being tools of white supremacy, talking about R. Kelly and Michael Jackson, but we're getting ready to get out of here unless you guys have any. Did you want to address something? Well, um, I want everybody to know we're going to talk about uh, the R. Kelly and the problem in the child support system to where uh, in this nation, you're not supposed to put people in prison, in debtor prison, but they go around that. By saying, you know, you had a court order against you and they're locking these guys up. It, I mean, it's ridiculous that he was locked up for that. And we, I also want to uh, go into, uh, tune in with us Tuesday or whatever to listen to the show, uh, the publishing aspect and how that kind of works. There's a thing where they broke it down. Because even though R. Kelly says he's broke, he's technically not broke. Legally, he can say he's broke, right. but there's a way that he's I'm manipulating sure the system. I'm sure science behind it. Yeah, there's a way that they're, they're doing it. And Charles it. says, D, are you an economist? I don't think so. Who? Me. Am I an economist? Mm, you, I, have, you have a background in it a little bit. I mean, I have a little background. Did you take micro and macro in college? Let me tell y'all something about me and math. <laughs> me and math are like water to my hair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It don't get along. I'm pretty good at math, so. Yeah, Donovan's good at math. Me, uh, listen, I've not ever faked the funk with you guys. Me and math don't get along. I do know how to balance my money, though. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you've been to a bank. Yeah, I know how to balance. I know how to spend more than I make. Right, right. I know how to keep it at a, you know, you know, at, at the balance just right. Because uh, right. I like lights and water and food. Exactly. You know. um, Al Jackson's joke of the day. You go ahead and read it. Okay. This is the first. Al Jack Jackson's joke of the day. Mom, I'm nasty. Dad, how nasty. Mom, unsweetened tea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it sounds much better you read yes, it than me. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys, uh, we are still talking South Africa. We are still going. We are waiting for the um, State Department to see how bad it's going to get over there. If you guys haven't uh, checked out what's going on in South Africa, it is going to get pretty intense as the white people are arming themselves, as they are not playing. And when that does happen, we, the Demetri K Show, we are going to go over there. We're going to be reporting that firsthand and Absolutely. let you guys know what's happening. We'll be doing a live from South Africa in the near future. And Charlie says, thank you for this live show. No, thank you. Thank you, because without you, we cannot do this. And uh, Marcus, yes, we talked about this. He says, please set a date to do an investment show once yes. a month at least. Be great if we can start that next week. Yes. Okay, so next I've been, week. I've been working on that. Okay, good. So we're going to do the investment show next week. Donovan is going to do the most of the spearheading about the investments. Yeah. I know I have a little background in investments and stuff, so I'll chime in too. Next week, I might be just a little late starting at 3.30 because I have a prior engagement, but God darn it, I'm going to be here um, no later than 3.30, you guys, okay? So I, at 3 o'clock is the normal time, but I will be here about 3.30. So next week, we're going to talk about money, investing, what else? Life um, insurance. Life insurance, taxes, mm -hmm. you name it. We're going to talk about it so we can help our people learn how to spend money. Yes. All right? Um, and uh, Gina says, that's right. Uh, that's all that matters about your money is that you don't spend more than you, <laughs> you can make. bring in. Right. That's right. And then, oh, thank you, uh, uh, Charlie. And Jonelle says, they're going to run them whites out of Africa. Yes, well, they we are. We're going to be there to Woo. see it. And so, anyway, I don't see any more comments. I love you guys dearly. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you to Donovan for doing all that you do, the bells and whistles. Thank you to Marcus for all that you do behind the scenes. And like I said, I will see you guys at 3.30 next week. And Bring all your questions, comments, and concerns about finances because we're going to do it. And do not forget to check out Demetra K on YouTube. I have a Look channel on Dimitri YouTube. If you uh, want K. Demetra K, it's building, it's growing. You know, people cuss me out every once in a while, but it's okay. Yeah, we get that a lot. <laughs> Donovan has one too, Donovan Sadiq, mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, news, from the, the news from the Edge mm -hmm. Mont. All right, so anyway, we're going to get out of here. We'll see you guys right next now, week. Let's turn to R. Kelly. Please. The troubled singer was taken into custody this afternoon after a hearing over unpaid child support. This coming just hours after the release of his riveting interview with Gail King. Now, Kelly's emotions bubbled over as he defended himself against sexual abuse charges 
we are the only show that spoke to Gail about the interview and how she remained calm in the eye of the storm. I thought a couple of times that maybe we're witnessing a breakdown as it's happening. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. I gave you 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. He was very much aware of what he was doing, but I also thought that on some level we were watching someone who was really needed help and needed help right away. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids and I can't do it. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. Oprah called me and said, are you okay? Are you afraid? I was never afraid. I knew that he was upset with me. I knew that he didn't like some of the questions, but I never thought that he was going to physically attack me. Oprah praised her bestie, tweeting, Bravo, Gail, for calm and steady focus during R. Kelly interview. I didn't see any point in both of us overreacting. R. Kelly became so emotional, Gail briefly paused the interview. Why would I hold all these women? In an exclusive clip that airs in full tomorrow on CBS This Morning, Gail asks if the performer has a kind of split personality. Are there two R. Kelly's? There's a Robert and there's a R. Kelly. Like One. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, all That's right, we'll go with corny. that. But absolutely we'll go not. With that. <laughs> but Robert, absolutely not. Seven weeks after Lifetime aired the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, the performer was charged with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, three of whom were allegedly minors at the time. In the documentary, the parents of R. Kelly's girlfriend, Joycelyn Savage, claimed she was being held against her will. Today, R. Kelly's team released an audio recording of Joycelyn telling them that's not the case. I have told you guys a million, million times that I am okay where I am, and I'm happy. R. Kelly also had some harsh words for Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga said, has, has apologized for working with you. That portion also airs tomorrow. Lady Gaga, she's a very great talent. It's unfortunate that her intelligence go to um, such a short level when it comes to that. I think he's disappointed that, you know, people have turned their backs on him. He intends to keep making music, and he hopes that people will still listen to his music.